Ladies and gentlemen of the congregation. Hey, hello. My arms are so tired. I should get a My whole face is tired. Point. I did a workout. For yeah. This. I'm tired of this last week. Okay, well, I started with mm. ladies and gentlemen of the congregation, so... Yes. Is that the intro to the stream, or...? Yeah, that was yes, the intro sir. to the damn stream. Oh, 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 oh yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. You guys, How do you yeah we're you alive, you smart-ass Well, I, I figured, but I wanted to be sure. <laughs> Please open your holy books of Rebooism. We're just jumping right in. To page 52... Yeah, I wasn't starting with your nonsense. We were getting right to it today. No, oh, that's fine. Oh, to page... Okay. 52 of the physical volumes of uh let's see what's the what's the kendall one at uh let me look it depends on how big my window is and where are we at on comic sans aka book walker it's, what the <laughs> fuck it's it's give me location 747 out of 5165 because that makes yeah, sense. I, 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 does that the same thing with me? Uh, 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 <laughs> we are, uh, we're in that 16. kind of mood Hold today. On. Wow, okay. Yeah. Uh, Let me see if I can't, like, default it, maybe, and see. Default? Default the font, because I do have it. It's on a bigger screen, so I am try I, so I can see it a little better. What? Bad dog? No, this is Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's not technical difficulties maybe today. It's, it's just regular dressed. difficulties. Yes, we're really just trying to figure not. out where, where Kindle is for all those who yeah. want to follow along. Look, 50% of your own Kindle, okay? 15%. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's not a page number, though. I guess it depends on how big the window is. I just know that we left off on... Or 14%, I guess. And this yeah. wasn't the only building site. That's yeah, that's where that paragraph starts. Man, this yeah. Holy cow! Yeah. Yep. So... Please tell me that that wasn't that wasn't that wasn't technical wasn't? difficulties due to lack of cookies. Mm -hmm. I knew you should have accepted those cookies. Maybe we should establish what pages we are before we start the stream and then do the bit. Mm. You can do that. <laughs> and then but do that's the your bit. thing. He he talks to you for Kindle. Me? Oh, yeah. I guess that's true. I tried to watch. He's like, I'm talking to the holy bishop over here. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's been Shim's thing. Shim was yeah. the first. Yeah, I guess that's true. Hold on, sorry. Gonna say, why, the light why of God is till... like coming in somehow. The light of God, praise holy. Which is yeah, you see that? Like, I'm above it's like right here. I you see that? Like, 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 to yeah. be fair, to be see, fair, I can, I can trace fair, it with my finger. Is very yeah. See. Moon is very. I don't pale, know what it is. So, yeah. the moon just wants to hog. Up it, it's. Up I think it's it. the light. There. The light from the sun there, now it's does gone. bounce off thine pale ass. That's good enough. <laughs> now you get oh. that, like this. You get my part uh, of my God, closet because I'm technically in the like, closet. The light from the sun like doth just... bounce off thine pale <laughs> ass. Pale <laughs> uh. ass, yes. Glad to see you in the Mashoku Tensei. No, we're not. Oh, yeah, that's right. You said no more Mashoku Tensei, didn't you? Mashoku Tensei. You sent me the last episode of Mashoku Tensei, didn't you? Yeah, did you Did you ever put out Wait, is it done? No, I haven't uploaded it. Man, I sent you the description and everything. Yes, the last thing Mashoku Tensei is up. I Destiny happened. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's Richie, been doing what's called. I've I've also, done the campaign twice on Legendary. Either mm. to twice? This no, I guess yeah. You have more stuff to get. I did it. Um, I've done it on my Hunter, and I've done it on my Warlock. I'm about to do it on my second Hunter. Right. I forgot. There's different but, classes. But I'm it's not going to do it me. on Legendary on my second Hunter. I'm just going to run through on the regular campaign. I'm, no I'm still <laughs> amazed I was able to do that one mission on Legendary. This stupid okay, spinning thing fair, of death. To be fair. Wolf. All right. On my Warlock, I ran through the entire campaign on Legendary solo, except for Callus. Callus was the only thing I could not do by myself. I was on there for 45 minutes doing Callus. I got him to second phase, his last third of health, could not kill him. Two people hopped on with me, which made it exceptionally harder. But, like, mm. we just Still. ate it's through scaling. Callus. Here's the funny thing. We ate through Callus, didn't even fucking touch the Tormentors. Didn't bother the Tormentors at all. We left them at full health. Just ate through Callus, got to his second phase. They were like, hey, just jump on these platforms. Okay. 
<laughs> and just okay just wasted him just threw our supers out Jeez. immediately killed him his second just phase went by like that it was real like, quick i just wanted to make even, sure you guys don't we you guys don't hear the, the sorry tormentors. yeah real quick you guys don't hear the the air the filter going off in the background right yeah we don't hear the air fryer either air fryer okay good good <laughs> clearly good. you don't clearly. own an air fryer yeah smash, smash, smash. yeah Smash, smash. Right. There we go. We get it in. Can't wait for season two. It starts releasing this month on Crunchyroll, right? Uh, I, uh, I didn't hear anything about, uh, I didn't hear anything about that. Wait, what? Oh, Crunchyroll? Something on Crunchyroll? What's up? Uh, Mashoku Tensei is happening <laughs> spring? Wait, what? Oh, season two. Interesting. Wait, uh, no, I didn't hear anything about that. I need to know. Oh, yeah, I was going to mention if you guys heard about Budokai Tenshikaichi 4. No. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, there's a trailer mm. dropped, I think, uh, a day. Actually, I haven't played the other one. The Jobless so. Reincarnation Season Same. 2 is set to appear on this year's green stage as the first program on March 26, 2023. What? What? Shit! Yeah, what? That's not far. <laughs> you that's finished far Season off. 1? Yeah. We released Season 1 days. in time, bro! What? <laughs> Excellent timing. Love Fantastic. it. Fantastic. I am we so can, happy about that. We can do we can do reactions together, just, buddy. Yes. Let's do it. And it's both of you, not just we one can, of you. We can do This do calls reactions. for a celebration snack. Here you go. Have one yeah. of these, my friends. Mm. Yeah, 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 snack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's anime church is. gonna go crazy this it's Sunday. Dude, yes, Jesus, we can do man. we can do huh. anime church reviews. Yes, we can. Yes! That'd be great! Mm. We can talk about this. So, mm -hmm. we know what we're doing after The Last of Us now, right? It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's just one episode left of that. Yeah, that's true. Oh. That's true. Uh, so, the other thing is, so oh, 6 a.m. Thank you, Snacks. <laughs> 6 yes. a.m. ISD. You're welcome. I don't know what the fuck that is. But, yeah, that's... Uh, there's plenty here for everyone. Eat up. Yay! Oh, when is the 26th? Mm. Uh, 20 days from now. That's Okay, so it gets released on Sundays. Yeah. Cool, cool. 9 Which a.m. Works JST. Out. No, no. March 26th, JST. But that's JST. So that's probably going to get... Japanese standard time. That's probably going to get dropped on Saturdays for us. Mm. Which is fine. 9.50 JST is what? Okay, so... nine. To what time, though? JST is... Dude, that's that's six uh that's six that? PM Saturday or on Saturday. Or that's six fifty in the evening Saturday. So it's probably gonna come out around Saturday evening uh hour time. So yeah. So Maybe. that's a Sunday watch. That's a Sunday watch. Uh Easy. Sunday, that's a Sunday watch right before anime church. Hell yeah. Mm. That's that's what well, we You can talk about it after the episode. Not before or after the church. church. I'll be fucking asleep. That no, no, no. You're getting up before anime church and we're watching motherfucking Mashoku Tensei, so it's fresh. That's... Yeah, because you're gonna want to talk time, about it, right? Uh, what time did you say again? It it it's Saturday evening. Saturday what time evening? Saturday evening? Yeah. Like, it'd be about, like, 8 o'clock for you. 8 o'clock p.m.? Mm-hmm. 8 o'clock. So, you'd be at work. How's about instead? Uh-huh. Outer offer. Like, a 7 a.m. watch? I won't be awake. That's okay, pretty so early. Fuck you. D don't well, he can watch it. Wake up early if you're not willing to do that. No, you wake Are up there early. Are there going to be Yeah. No, I yeah. need sleep. Need to Go to bed early. I barely get enough sleep as it is. I don't get home till six or seven on most days. Go to bed as soon as you get home. I do. <laughs> okay. And there you go. It's still not enough. I do. Because no, I still wake up at <sighs> three. You still two wake would up at three. Two be my time. Two. Two. Yeah. Your time. I woke up at three today. Ugh. Actually, no. I woke up closer to four. <laughs> but still. <laughs> 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 like, look, I, I caught don't it pretty like close. It when it encroaches on later times, because then it's like I'm losing time. I'm becoming the vampire. 
Daylight saving times. And, oh, that's coming up too. You gotta start Fuck worried about daylight that. Daylight time. Mm. Fuck it. Daylight savings time should not exist. We should just stay on standard. Yes. <sighs> daylight savings time is stupid. All right. Speaking of stupid yes, things, sir. let's read this book. Read this okay. stupid book. That was a terrible the transition, total. but. <laughs> Spe speaking mm. of stupid, Patrick. Well, <laughs> well, Reamer can be very stupid at times. So there we go. Also true. Anyway, uh, so Shim, it's not that bad. Shim, take over. Mm. Yeah, it's okay. your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> Patrick, okay. read the book. <laughs> Okay. Wait. Okay. No, okay. Don't read the book as Patrick. Please don't. Okay. Don't tempt no. him. The machinations no. of my mind are an enigma. Stop it. Okay, I got it. I got it. And this wasn't the only building site. In war, deploying in multiple directions at once is usually ill advised, but not with construction. We decided that a multi tier plan that followed a certain order would be more efficient. It trained our combat engineers as well, so I left teams of crewmen to our commanders, assigning them areas to cover. To be exact, we now had four district or distinct construction departments. One in Dwargan, one in Inglacia, one in Eurasania, and one in Thalion. In Dwargan, we already had a complete highway in place. The inns serving it were finished. The roads widened to allow for a dedicated magic train rail line. We were even hiring adventurers as day laborers. Wherever work was available, people come soon after, or wherever work's available, people come soon after. So things were going to get pretty busy over there. Next, Inglacia. Things here were about the same as Dwargan. We had built the highway there on the water side as well, so rails were being laid down. <laughs> that work would be completed soon. Construction over in Eurozania came last. We were expanding the highway right now, taking care to preserve the local ecosystem as we did. Any trees cut down during construction were slated for use in the building of the new capital, so we were fine-tuning our transport logistics. Thalion, meanwhile, was, go or was slow going. Excuse me. We had to start by clearing out forest land, so we were experiencing more delays than I thought. I'd assigned high orcs to handle this task as they were capable of carrying things around via their stomachs. The high orcs were the most skillful groups for this, so simply making a road wasn't a problem. However, they also had to transport the trees they felled, and that required labor. Once things wrapped up in Eurasania, we planned to shuttle the staff over to Thalion to help them out. Or help out. For now, at least, they would open a path in the forest. We could take our time paving the highway later on. Opening the planned tunnel and installing rails were both projects we decided to put off for later. That was the state of things in the four regions. Not everyone agreed with the magic train line between us and the Dwarven Kingdom. Some people feared the possibility that we'd misread the, the Eastern Empire's moves and let information on the project leak out. They could potentially steal the magic train plans and use them against us in military evasion, a kind of double-edged sword. We could also have the rail lines we spent so much time on get torn up and destroyed. Others suggested that we should be focusing our building efforts on things like anti -mili or anti-empire military outposts. The highway's largest lodging facility was on the site where the road met the Emeld River. They wanted this reworked into more of a fortress city. I gave it some thought, but opted against it. It seemed pointless. There was no telling how the Eastern Empire would move yet, so I hesitated to add further needless work to our plates. Even now, with more workers on hands, we still had tons to do. I didn't want to divert labor to more low-priority projects. That didn't mean we weren't on alert. We didn't take action because we assumed the Empire would do nothing. Instead, if they ever seriously decided to confront, uh, to confront us, we'd simply crush them with everything we had. Mm. I had no interest in extended mind games here. It'd be stupid to stay on hyper alert for ages on end. Depending on what they did, I was ready to use our full powers to bring any conflict to a very quick resolution. But Kevin and I reasoned that that was the cleanest way to go at it. Yes, we did need to worry about damage to our railways and so on, but if that happens, we can always rebuild. We couldn't delay development because we were scared of potential future events. The angels attack, for one, no matter or no matter who's confronting us, we weren't about to step down. If the enemy comes riding in, we annihilate them and start building again. <clears throat> Excuse me. We needed to consider protecting ourselves. But really, our greatest asset wasn't things. It's people. If we keep our workers safe, we're good. And after pursuing that plan, I found that our construction work was going at a shockingly fast clip. It's not about the labor, <clears throat> it's family. It's about family. Your it's family. about Ohana. Yep. My final stop on this impromptu inspection trip was the Kingdom of Farmus. Or, yeah, Farminus. As promised, Yom had recruited a team of ha to handle the preliminary work for a magic train line. They had picked sites for the rail line, according to the report I read, and surveying had just been completed. I figured they'd get to work on that after the harvest season was over, but Yom, or Murin, really, made this a bigger priority. Why wouldn't I? She said with a smile. 
we know how rich we can get off the foreign currency received for our crops. If we should ever have a famine, that's enough money to easily provide food support. I would absolutely hate to see your magic trains ready to deploy and us without any railways to support them. She was more passionate about the project than I was. As the Queen of Farmanists, she was now taking an active policy making role for her kingdom. Ha ha ha! I guess I don't even have to be here, eh? This is more up Rommel's alley anyway. He's running things on site. Yom grinned as he had introduced me to Rommel, a man I had seen a few times before, the sorcerer on Yom's team during his adventuring days. If I recall, he looked nervous as he updated me on their current status, unfurling a map detailed enough to be classified material and explaining in detail where the highway would go. It had all been surveyed to the level of detail I requested, and I had promised to make the final checks. So I quickly headed over, examining the whole path uh, before the day was through. There's... Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. There's still a few kinks we need to work out, but overall, it makes the grade. You wrote down exactly who's responsible for each section, right? Yes, Sarimaru. We procured everything as you've outlined to us. Okay, then we'll have the people running this section, this section, and also this section. Investigate these spots for me again. It seemed to me personnel training was going well here. They had a complete project map in place, all within <laughs> permissible levels of accuracy. Some of the teams weren't quite all there yet, but I could tell they were diligently studying their craft. If they could look over or look things over one more time, I was sure they'd recognize their own mistakes. A bit of tough love, maybe, but I couldn't get lazy here. Maybe we'd have computer precision if I did everything, but that'd be meaningless. I wanted them to earn the achievement of doing this themselves. It helped raise the next generation of engineers. At this rate, I didn't think the fixes would take much time. We could likely push construction up a bit. I'd probably need to ask Kaijin soon to get our automatic magical generators ready for them. These generators were real impressive, all, all but guaranteeing the safety of travelers on the highway to Blumend. Since they operated as stone slabs reacting to magicules, they served as guideposts for the highway as well. Tempest visitors liked them a lot, as did our soldiers who ran the highway patrol. The magical count around Farmanus wasn't as high as the Forest of Jura, but we planned to put the generators in regardless. Oh, also, uh, thanks for the seventh month subscription. Oh, or, hey! Yeah, congratulations. Good work. Blade. Good work. Blade. 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 Rip. Blade. Yes. Worth. <laughs> Hi, one who just came in. <laughs> also, guys, um, just a heads up. I prefer Baku God. <laughs> guys, guys, just a heads up. If you get spammed by Nightbot, cool. I, I have no control over it anymore. Just putting that out there. Gotcha. So, uh, don't, just don't, hope Lady Chan doesn't come in. Don't be surprised. It. <laughs> if she comes in, run. Run? Run. Shut everything run, down. Run. Fire everything and fire everyone. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Yom <laughs> and his court gave us a warm welcome that day. I gotta love how you're still swaggering around by yourself everywhere, doing whatever you want, huh, pal? I'm jealous. The drunken Yom seemed pretty serious about that. But he misread me. I wasn't alone. I've got Ranga with me, actually. You called, master? He popped his face out from behind my shadow. I don't know. How was that? Was it decent that. enough? Just... Just... Huh? Yeah. You, Just... you right? Yeah. It's like, no, Ranga, go back I in the shadow. Here. Yeah. I'm always Whoa. watching. <laughs> he is, though. <laughs> Whoa. You were there? You startled me. I'm sure he did. I doubt. Wait. Oh, that says Edgar. Okay. I'm sure he did. I doubt many people could hope to lay a finger on a demon lord. But it is the duty of any humble servant to be concerned for his master's safety. It is true for me as well, my liege. And I hope you will consider acting more like the king you are. Yeah, sure, Edgar. You know I'm going to be free of this job once you're grown enough, right? Edgar was the son of Edmaris, the previous king. He seemed intelligent enough, and I certainly couldn't doubt his lineage. Yom, apparently, still felt a little like he usurped the throne of his own country, so he was king on, keen on naming someone from the mainline royal family as his crown prince. D don't be silly, your majesty. You know Queen Muir is with child, and it is only natural that they will inherit the throne next. And it is my humble dream to serve this new ruler someday, so please refrain from any statements that could be interpreted as encouraging a succession battle. It seemed like Edgar had no interest in being king, but I suddenly wasn't so concerned about that. Well, wait a second. Did you just drop some big news on me? I was about to give Ranga a big, meaty bone when my hand stopped. Queen, Queen Mira was with child? Yes, it was pretty simple for a human and high-level magicborn to produce offspring, but... What? Uh, why are you surprised? <laughs> anyway. She's pregnant, what? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I guess it would be because he hasn't seen him for a while. But I mean, come on, they they were like, they like each other. They they really like each other. 
man. Anyway, your, your majesty, Edgar began with a roll of the eyes. After everything Sir Reamer has done for you, you still haven't informed him of the pregnancy? Ah, but I was too embarrassed. The puppies! And it seemed... <laughs> That's kind of funny. <laughs> that is kind of funny. Ah, it's like, I didn't want to... I didn't want to fucking... Uh... I, I, I it would have been weird. But I mean, look at look seemed... at how he's reacting now. He's being all weird about it. <laughs> yeah, and it seemed awkward for me to break the news. So those two really were made for each other. But didn't monsters and magic born get weaker upon giving birth? Would Mirren be okay? That won't be a problem. She briskly replied. I was originally human after all, and I may weaken, yes. But at this point in my life, strength means little. I'll retain all my magic and knowledge, so it will be hardly be of or be much of a hindrance. And by the way, that Grusith still ain't cut recovered from the news. Guess it was just too much of a shock for the guy. Ah, uh, I was wondering why I hadn't seen him at all. But hey, there's plenty of fish in the sea, you know. Not that it was for me to comment on anyway. There's really never, or there's never really been a significant other in my life. It's something Grusiths Grusith was gonna have to tackle for himself. Hmm. Or Dang. well, um. My condolences to him. What's up? I was going to say, damn, he got no significant other in his life. Not yet. Well, mm -hmm. um, yeah, my condolences to him. <laughs> Are your night corps doing OK despite that? Diablo had managed to tame the bloodthirsty rebel forces of the past. I didn't think there was much to worry about, but if their captain was in that state of affairs, he gave me pause. Uh, it's going fine. His pals are still around. And I tell you. Rosin's really pulling his weight, too. Living le Legends is right, I guess. He's constantly impressing me. Oh, right. Rosin was here. Diablo had made a servant out of him, and it sounded like he was working hard in farming us. Oh, yeah. Of course. Diablo's unique skill tempter had forged a mortal contract between the two of them, so a betrayal for him was out of the question. Yes, said Edgar, eyes shining like the boy he was. And Sir Rosin still got the energy to go around the country inspecting and observing matters. He contacts us magically on regular occasions, and if he, the weeds of unrest ever show themselves, he immediately uproots them for us. It sounded like Rosin was pretty popular in Farminus. To me, who had mostly just heard about him, I thought Rosin did some pretty inhumane things, but when it came to protecting his nation, he was absolutely the man to count on. I saw no need to dredge up past issues, or past issues, excuse me. So I listened to Edgar describe him. It was interesting, hearing about things from someone else's perspectives. The, winner, the winners write the history books, as they say, and the losers come out with nothing. To the citizens of Farminus, though, King Edmaris and Rosin were the good guys. If I had lost a battle against the Farmus forces, right now I'd be touted as a fiendish warlord leading an apocalyptic horde of monsters. I didn't want to look down on anyone, but that's the kind of freedom winning got you. Along those lines, the new nation Yom established could be classified as a pretty big success. Uh, oh, good night. Um, the more oh. talented people in office beforehand were still maintaining their roles, keeping the nation well administered and discontent at a minimum. They were also controlling the media to keep us from gaining a bad reputation, and Tempest was now seen as a friendly partner. At this rate, any prejudice against monsters was bound to dissipate over time. Diablo's talent's really shown here, I think. He gave me pretty much the exact results I wanted. I guess he's just that good at rating people. So, everything was going according to plan. That gladdened me, and I round out, or rounded out the night talking merrily with Yeoman and everyone else. While I was at work, Ramirez and Veldora were apparently tackling something on their own. Once I returned from my inspection run, they were waiting together to greet me. But them, it'd be either a major problem or something they wanted to brag about, and this time it was the latter. We've done it, Rimuru. We've completed our test unit. If the test ends successfully, we can be mass-producing these with haste. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And let me tell you, I'm brimming with confidence about this. Come on, check it out. I let them hurry me along. Tempest currently had several research sites in operation. One was the workshop of Kurobe and his apprentices, open up to the, or open to the public. Much of their R&D was stuff that had no value of stolen, unless you had someone with Kurobe's talents. The special weapons I enlisted them for or for were an exception, but for the most part, we revealed all the weapons and armor created in here or in there. A little advertising never hurt, and we decided to release this stuff with a splash, introducing a spring line and everything. I wanted to mold Kurobe and Garm into real established brands someday, <laughs> but... We were headed elsewhere to a facility handling a range of research kept classified by the government. The we need an easily brand. guardable side. What did you say? The Garm brand. The Garm brand. I'd, I'd like. I'd wear a Garm brand jacket. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> or a Kurobe brand boots. That'd be kind of cool. You got the Garm no, brand. Kurobe, Kurobe, Kurobe yeah. and Garm make the weapons. It's the Shuna no. brand clothing. Anyone want to wear some Garm garters? 
That would be kind of nice. Like, yeah. Garments. Mm. Some garments. garments? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I like it. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Garments. 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 Yep. Write that down. Write that yeah. down. Good. You Perfect. Thank you. The funny part is that uh. Shuna makes the clothes. Yeah, that's true. Ooh. That's true. So, yeah. Okay, so Garms Garments. Garms Garments. Garms. Yeah. Garmers. Yeah, Garmers. Garmers. <laughs> yeah. Kurobe Good. and Garms. Kurobes and Garmaments. There you go. Garms and Garmers. Perfect. Yeah. Good. Perfect. We got it. Oh yeah, <laughs> But we were, oh excuse me, but we were headed elsewhere to a facility handling a range of research kept classified by, go by the government. We needed an easily guardable site that regular people couldn't get inside, and so we focused on inside the dungeon. On floor 100 was Tempest's publicly funded R and D center, led by Gabiru, along with individual research spaces for Amiris, Valdora, and me. We had another large facility on floor 95 inside the park we established on that level. The Beast Man refugees were no longer there. And we had a large or a huge amount of space. So I figured we may as well take advantage. We had alchemists from Jorgen, sorcerers, researchers from Thalion, and vampire researchers with too much time on their hands from Rebellious assembled in Tempest. And we needed a large scale facility to house them all. Each of them brought their own specialized talents. The Dwarven alchemists were gifted in spirit engineering, the field that birthed the magic armor soldier project Kaijin and Vesta were once involved in or involved with. In this world, natural phenomena were thought of as tied to the spirits, the five base elements of earth, wind, fire, and water, or fire, water, and air, and the three higher elements of light, dark, and time. Science that harnessed these phenomena and technological systems that developed them were known as spirit engineering. It formed the mainstream of scientific thinking around here. Our visitors from Thalion, meanwhile, were schooled in the largely concealed field of sorcerous science, a scholarly realm that only those who truly master magic could reach. Its core fundamentals were proposed by the Thalian Emperor, Almizia's mother, a genius elven researcher. Her teachings had been inherited and replicated by a large number of people. The field even ventured into the philosophical, exploring just how far one could wrangle magic to change the world and its natural laws. This is the sort of thing that Diablo would love, I'm sure. The true worth of, his, of this theorizing, however, was enforcing certain alterations to pre-existing phenomena, which would help advance the field of spirit engineering in turn. You need to be a true expert in elemental magic to even begin to understand it, but the potential benefits went without saying. What also went without saying was that Thalion kept it strictly confidential, prohibiting anyone from revealing its secrets to other nations. Finally, there were the vampires, whom I accepted after I, I promised Illuminous. These were overcomers, vampires powerful enough to be deemed calamity-level threats, but they were all rather eccentric characters, but at least there weren't many of them. I had very real concerns they might cause me trouble, but it turned out I shouldn't have worried. Hey, hey, Re Sir Rimuru! Let me tell you how curious we are about all the fun stuff in here, man. This was my main contact among them, and he was just an, he was an extremely cheerful, affable man. They just loved new things. None of them minded humans or elves or dwarves among the coworkers. Now, when they had such big intellectual properties, uh, intellectual curiosities to satisfy, some of them came off as pretty arrogant. But Veldora and Ramirez worked alongside them, and while Ramirez was never going to serve as a decent authority figure, her servants, Beretta and Trainee, weren't about to stand for it. Anyone too arrogant for their taste got less than royal treatment. Yo, get me some tea, girl. Yes, right away, sir. I don't even read this. Man, work took a lot out of me today. My shoulders are killing me. Oh, let me massage them, sir. And these were the overcomers. <laughs> <laughs> these damn fools. Pathetic. The vampire's leaders whined a bit about it, but nobody dared lodge a complaint at Valdora or Ramirez. They were a lot more cooperative after that. Their research, meanwhile, was actually pretty interesting. They were taking the opposite approach from sorcerous science, something Luminous dismissed as useless. But I disagreed. On Earth, we'd call their field of research physical engineering. They were trying to discover the rules of nature with all the magical elements removed. The laws of physics they produced from that, laid out in intricate detail, stem from the heart of their science. This was all totally reproducible work, but while I should have expected it, in a world where the degree of magic in an area could affect things differently, it was treated as kind of a fringe field. Luminous didn't like it, which I thought was interesting in itself. Even if all the data gathering was just a pastime for a bunch of bored vampires, their massive archives held a lot of purpose for me. They made it easier to examine the effects of magic. Any great news or new breakthrough is the product of a number of much smaller ones, so I thought the research didn't deserve revulsion at all. So I had teams of leading experts in a variety of intellectual fields in my nation. The information they brought us was invaluable. The potential results when you mix them together was incalculable. Our nation's task was to secure their safety and comply with any secrecy requirements related to their results. I thus had all researchers wear special Ramirez crafted bracelets. 
Basically, unlimited use resurrection bracelets also provided communications and teleportation within the labyrinth, although only the, between the research facility on the surface. The need for confidentiality would be an inconvenience for many researchers, so I thought this freebie could help them out. None of them could leave floor 95 without teleporting. Their data was recorded whenever they did so, preventing leaks. They could also ask a dryad to teleport them, but that required training's okay, so any spy activity in the labyrinth would be doomed to fail. Of course, I thought the overcomers had an honest chance of fighting their way down the normal route, but it'd be inherently dangerous. Not even I knew all the traps laid throughout, but I doubted even a talented team of vampires would find it a cakewalk. We kept tabs on their movements so we could tail them in case they tried anything and capture them once the labyrinth hopefully slowed them down. We had such draconian measures in place for a good reason. Angels apparently came or come down to attack advanced civilizations in this world, and that was a big part of it. Ramirez's labyrinth, or Ramirez's labyrinth couldn't be a better safeguard. Even an angel attack could be kept away from floor 95. The worst came to worse, Ramirez bragged she could just update the dungeon and swap 90, floor 95 out with floor 99. That's kind of cool. The city and facility in the labyrinth's deepest recesses was the safest spot in all of Tempest. Keeping it fully isolated was a great way to stop classified leaks and maintain the health of its inhabitants. Floor 95 provided the most extensive services my nation had to offer, and I thought it'd be more than enough to satisfy anyone who took advantage of them. By the way, our former main research site in the sealed cave was currently closed off. After multiple rounds of hypocte hip cultivation, the concentration of magicals in the herb has started to take a dip. They were still high, but we anticipated that yields would continue their downward trend, so we decided to change cultivation sites. Or, really, we just devoted a section of Floor 93's flower gardens to hypocte growth, upping the magical count to encourage sudden mutations among the weeds. Or among the weeds. Gabiru's lab was already moved to Floor 100, too, so that made things more... Excuse me, convenient for him. Especially the Shutter Cave. The source of all of it, Veldora, is now in the dungeon. So it's like, just move yeah, everything to the like... dungeon because, like, the source of the magic will, like, leak. Yeah, we, we killed two birds with one stone exactly. on that one. Let's, 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 let's like, maybe in there. It'll be like, fine. Literally, like, literally, you've got a never ending magic generator in Veldora just sitting right there. <laughs> The Veldora yeah. is the powerhouse of the labyrinth. Yeah, right. Now we just have yeah. to make figure out a way to harvest it for our electricity for my electric yeah, yeah. oven. She's the mitochondria of the dungeon. She is though. <laughs> anyway, can, can, can the... we turn his magical energy into a source of power that I could plug in my electric cooker into? <laughs> They'd probably be able to do that. Yeah, I mean everything in that town runs on magicules and like. Yeah, so he's basically a living power. fucking power source. So yeah, I mean, everything in that town is kind of a living power source. That's true. Like, there are so many like people with massive. There, there, yeah. there are so many like monsters that are just generating fucking just magicules, oozing like, magicules yeah. all the time. Diablo's there too. Well, not now, the but thing. you know. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Later, mm. they evolve. Later. <laughs> Everything. So it's like, boy, it's not, it's, <laughs> get it's, named it's, again. No, no, no. Yeah. They don't get named again. They just evolve. And, yeah. And it's like, and it's like when one thing evolves, every all of all of the things that all of the things that serve under them evolve again. So it's like, yeah. So it's like, mm. yeah. So like, if if Benny Maru evolves, everybody that works under him evolves with him. Just, so it's like. Yeah, it's like a massive evolution. This world has a very complicated but very interesting evolution mechanic. Oh yeah, how come this is a lot more clear before? cut than? I mean, and here's the crazy thing. Clear, like... And here's the crazy thing. Mm. Riru still gets the benefits of all of that shit because food. Oh stand. yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, and the fucking shared system that he has so he can use any of their skills. Every time they evolve, he benefits from that shit. Yeah, he so it's like, so broken. He, he, yeah, he's just absurdly broken yeah, all the time. It's so broken. It's so it'd be broken. like a, having a Yu Gi Oh card that has like every possible good skill on the planet. Like if Rimuru, I'd agree. If, if Rimuru were a card in Yu Gi Oh, he would be banned immediately. He, he'd be those ones that are like made up, like Pokemon or Yu Gi Oh cards that does like 900 trillion damage, or like mm -hmm. you put down this card and you just win the game. I mean, if you it's think that. about Victory it, Dragon, if yeah. you think about it, Rimuru yeah. is basically Pot of Greed. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Agreed. That's what I said. Yeah. Just helps things accelerate faster. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I do, I do wish. Going on Yu-Gi-Oh real quick, I do wish that they would make oh, a fuse uh, into blue eyes no, and red no, eyes. No, 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 he's a blue slime dumb dragon. 
You lose slime and tongue dragon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. you, yeah. <laughs> That's not untrue. <laughs> right. mm. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Oh. All good. Uh, <laughs> we were all. Oh, it was a large scale of. Oh, yeah. Um, it was this large scale facility on floor 95 that the two of them guided me to. We didn't visit one of their private rooms, signifying this was the result of collaborative work with the others. Work on the, re uh, the test unit was going well, apparently, as this was the related research. And they even said it'd be done before our rail lines opened up. I haven't been down to floor 95 in a while, and in the meantime, it had transformed into a sort of forest city. In the middle of a beautifully kept <laughs> park, there was a townscape that seemed to sprout up among the trees. I was impressed at how quickly they all set this up, but this was sure, or, but was sure we were seeing some elven ingenuity at work. Maybe the tree ants as well. Either way, it was a lovely space. Tree ants. Transient labyrinth. What's up? Tree ants. Tree ants. Okay, sorry. Not tree ants or whatever. Yeah. Transient. Okay, it's like tree ants. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Transient labyrinth challengers, of course. Couldn't come in here unless they were study or studly enough to hack and slash in a long way. I personally took advantage of the members only elf club from time to time, but almost <laughs> never came here during the daytime. Oh, okay. So I didn't think I had changed quite this much. I left its development wholly in the hands of Eldora and Ramirez, and I have to say that I liked their work. It offered variety from the rest of the levels, and I'd love to enjoy a leisurely tour sometime. This was on my mind as I followed them towards a modern research building made of reinforced Imagine concrete and standing out. Imagine your way the through like, the crazy, fucking insane levels of 1 through 94, and then you arrive on floor 95, and it's just fucking paradise. <laughs> Be a really nice break from all that. Not it's like, you just show there, you're covered in blood, you're ready for the next job. Okay, what the? And then it's oh. just, it's like Disneyland or, actually no, it'll like, be like no, a no, spa. No, it's, just, it's just a fucking day spa. It's like, people are wandering around and it, it, you just like. Oh, <laughs> what? Actually, I would be incredibly what? paranoid too, because I'd be like, oh fuck, this is a trap. Am I dead? How is this are not a trap? Did I die? Did I yeah. not survive that floor? Like, is this welcome, another... Well, welcome to floor 95. What the fuck is going on? What is welcome this? Welcome to die. Like, <laughs> ah, you have reached our research facility. What, what, what are you researching? Uh, we can't tell you. It's, if it's we tell culture. you, we have to kill you. If we tell you, we do center. have to kill you. However... Yeah. The winged dragon of however, Nome, I just however, that. however, however. And then you're greeted by, like, Veldor and Ramirez. They're like, you have to sign these waivers in order to walk through <laughs> this floor. No yep. one will attack you. This is basically a research facility. It's top secret uh, Tempest uh, government shit. But this is mm -hmm. just a research facility, but you can enjoy the recreational facility. By the way, have you gone to our elf club and tried the alcohol here? It's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> it's like, it is, it is top it is tier, sir. It is basically they give you the Tempest tour. It's like, mm. and it's like, it's just like, like you're, blah, you're blah, a blah, battered, blah. bloodied warrior. It's like, all right, 95, here we go. And it's like, it's and it's like, like welcome it's like, to our lumble abode. It's like, fuck, it around. was so worth going through the first 94 floors just <laughs> to make it through the Tempest tour. Dude, Riru would be all about that. He's like, oh my God, you've got to, you've got to go through the first 94 floors just to try the Tempest tour. Oh my God. <laughs> Dude, yeah, he would yeah. he would put that shit. He would he would have like the first couple of groups go through and just be flabbergasted as they go on the tour, and he would film that shit and put that shit up. Like he would x out the parts. Have reactions. They, he would have to x out the parts of like the whole explanation of like certain things. But like once they started doing the Tempest tour and just showing like the oh my god, like the food and like some of the drinks and the service and everything, and just show that. Like the amount of motivation for everybody to start going through the dungeon to get the Tempest tour treatment. The TTT. You're going to get that money. TTT. Yeah. The TTs. Yep. Good. Because once you show the elf bar. Because once you show the elf bar. I want to go to one of those. The TTs. I really do want to go to one of those. Would you go through 94 floors of hell to get the other one? Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. I'd probably die around, like, floor 50 or so. Well, I mean, you know you're going to die anyway. Yeah, that's from this. Come on. 
Well, and you well, you start uh, back from level fifty, the, right? When we guys? have not got to the newly and improved boss floors of fifty and above yet. I guess it depends oh. on what my skills are. Because I don't know what kind of life because skills here's are. the thing: <laughs> gotta work we on haven't your seen what Adelman is like now that he's gotten his upgrades. A dolman. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, you do not know the powers that I hold. He's the skeleton man, right? I forget. Gay. <laughs> <laughs> Come at yeah. me, gay! You desire to fight. I Every time you, you get to do that voice, I swear I, I think it's ban of Sans brother from Undertale. Right, let's, yeah, let's it's basically going. him. Or San, sorry, Jokes I don't know how. On you. I'm, I'm into that into shit. Into that shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway. That was on my mind as I followed them towards a modern research building made of reinforced concrete and standing out within the park in the middle of the city. That's what was there was on a your large mind. building. Jokes on you. Yes. I'm into that shit. That's what was on your mind. Uh, that was. It wasn't in my I mind. I've been thinking about that. I'm into a lot of know? shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely into that. There was a large building situated next to it. Goblins, too, but that's a separate story. Anyway, with one block devoted to accommodations for visiting research. I'm sorry. Okay. Are you? Goblin no, thirst is very. I am not sorry, but goblin thirst is there very go. real. Dude, goblin no, 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 about yeah. yesterday. I can't okay. Why. Okay. Why I'm sorry. I like Honey Goblin. Eyes, I like. Man. Goblin titties was <laughs> trending on Twitter, yep. and I don't know why. Uh, I'm sorry. Honey Goblin is one of my favorite why? YouTubers for a reason. So, mm. you know. Actually, I, I think it. I do know why. Mm. Mm. Uh, what's the name of that anime? God. No, we're good. We're something, good. We're something involving Peter Kuhn. I don't know. I don't know what the name of that is. Peter Kuhn. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I had directed the construction of this building, but now for that some is reason, his name Peter. 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 It had this natural weathered look anyway. to it. It struck a really unique presence, and I didn't mind it at all. Very charming. I like how it's kind of nestled among the trees, right? Every research lab needs to look like it houses a dragon's horde of secrets. Nestled oh, among that's those where eyes. They are. Yeah. So... <laughs> Peter Grill, thank you. Veldora has... Peter. <laughs> anyway. Peter. Veldora was patting himself on hey, the back. Peter. Hey, 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 Can I borrow your egg, Peter? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't... I should have started it. My bad. <laughs> hey, Peter. <laughs> Can I borrow your leg? Can I borrow, borrow your femur? You gotta, Can I you borrow your femur? Peter. Peter. Right, I really need to walk. Stop! Sorry, anyway. Veldora was patting himself on the back like Akito had just completed work on a secret treehouse hideout. Oh, I have no yeah. idea what or who gave him such a skewed view of the world. Everyone's getting along... Oh, wait. Uh, Everyone's getting along so well in there these days, you know? There was talk about forming a kind of secret society. A uh, secret society? What were these people even doing in there? <laughs> You're the one who blew the lid open on all their research first, weren't you, Rimuru? Or aren't you, Rimuru? That sure took care of anyone looking to steal people's data and make it their own. Ah, yes, that did happen. There were a lot of walls between nations and plenty of clashes of opinion between the world scientists. Most researchers, keeping their homeland secrets in mind, concealed their tech while trying to absorb some of their rivals, or so absorb some from their rivals. I didn't see that as constructive, so I just laid bare everything we knew. The word classified didn't mean anything to Raphael anyway. So... I collated it all into an easy-to-grasp instruction manuals for the public and passed out copies, using up all the va the valuable paper Yuki procured for me. Maybe a little wasteful, but I just felt it was a justified loss. I really wanted to manage our, pa our documents with real plant fiber-based paper, not parchment. The stuff Yuki gave me was apparently from the Empire, and it was almost as good as what I had on Earth. Giving it all away, I thought, demonstrated just how dedicated we were. Ever since then, researchers had become a lot more frank with one another. Their intellectual curiosities drove them to seek collaboration. Finally. <laughs> right. I collated all the secret info out there into written documents so anyone can browse through them. There were uh, a few complaints about it, but I think it's going to do a lot to advance technology. Oh, it will. And it has, Rimuru. There was kind of a big commiseration party after that dropped, and everybody hit it off with one another. As Ramirez explained, once everyone gave up on concealing their data and started working with others, it created a weird sort of solidarity along or across the lab. Since then, they had stopped being so obsessed over their home nations. Even the overcomer vampires were treated as friends and equals now. It was really fascinating to see, and I liked seeing it. It was great, but what came after was the problem. The researchers were now their own little community, with Valdora and Ramirez at the top, and thanks to that, the community was now an organized group. A mysterious environment where everyone could research whatever they wanted, or whatever they wanted to their heart's content. 
a system exactly like the evil little secret society we had going. <laughs> Ramirez boundedly, ex- it is kind of an evil little secret society. <laughs> oh, it just dawned on me too. That's like, oh, excuse me. They evil could totally have society. a. They could totally have people living in there, and be yes. like, "What is the outside world? This is the only world I know." <laughs> like bo- just born out from that God secret society. God damn like, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legend has it there's a world outside here, out this da- labyrinth, with a sun and just continue. Okay. Ramirez, boundlessly fascinated by all this stuff, was now the mascot slash head cheerleader for of them all. Adora, meanwhile, was positioned more like a mafia boss. At first, I grumbled about it. I turned my eyes away for a moment, and this happens. But then it dawned on me that if I had been around, it probably would have happened even faster. Wait, nuh-uh, it wouldn't, I swear. Yeah, it would have. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh-uh. Nuh-uh, yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> here's how we've arranged the externals of it. What do you think? Cool, huh? Like a villain's secret hideout? Oh, God, it was a secret hideout. A lot of Eldora's knowledge was based off things regenerated from my memories, particularly manga the like, so no wonder I could identify this at a glance. He literally made the Umbrella Corporation. (laughs) Good. Oh, no. Oh, 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 no. Yeah. Look at at you guys having all this fun without me. (laughs) Let me assure you, we are only getting started. We'll likely need to tap into your intellect shortly, you see. That's right, Rimuru. You're always constantly surprising us, so now it's our turn. So let's show you what we've been working on, and then I want to hear your feedback. Veldora laughed at my completely honest complaint. Ramirez provided me at least a little sympathy. They were touting it up that much. I couldn't pout like usual. Regrouping, I stepped into the lab. Mm-hmm. 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 People in white coats restlessly, restlessly beavered away. I passed by them as we came to what looked like a model train. I love hey, the, boss. See, I told you What's it's up? the Umbrella Corporation. They're walking around it's in the white umbrella. coats. Yeah, they're like fucking they scientists. They lab coats. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. Just picture this. Picture this. Yeah. All right. Okay. Dwarven scientists, vampires. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Vampires. Elf mage scientists, and they're all running around in lab coats. That's kind of cool, actually. Along with, like al- along with like the Monster lot. Nation scientists. And they're all running around in lab coats. <laughs> This is a glasses, really weird Resident novels. Evil spin-off series now that you're you pitching here. Now you understand why awesome. I got the lab coat. <laughs> now it's awesome. <laughs> That's yeah. a good touch. I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I knew. Hey, I knew. You knew. I knew. You knew? You, knew? I knew. you didn't tell us? No. I, knew. I once, oh, yeah, for good reason. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Once they said dungeon, once, once we got to the dungeon, I was sitting here like, oh, this is going to get good because... Cause first I was like, I was like the RPG stuff. That's cute. Yes. Wait till we start talking about the 95th floor. <laughs> yep. We're here now. Finally here. Started yes. for you. Oh, you. Started with the dungeon. Now we're here. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> true. All right. <laughs> Good. All right. Hey boss. Surprise. It hey, was boss. Kaijin of all Surprise! people. Surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Kaijin of all people in a lab coat that didn't look at all right on him. Oh, that's right. He seemed to be running things right now. Hey, boss. Surprise. Yeah, there you go. Surprise. Surprise. He's he's (laughs) a dwarf. Oh. (laughs) The space the size of a college lecture hall was lined with rails to the point that you had to watch where you stepped. There were miniature mountains, valleys, and tunnels. Maybe they were doing aerodynamic analysis or something. Wow. This entire space is a test facility? Uh Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. No, I'm kind of. I, I got a voice. Yeah, go ahead. That's right. right. Forgot about that. Do it, I yeah. gotta do it, right? That's right. I forgot. Huh. It's been a while. Way to get it on the first guess. Sonic will but... get there one day. What's really mm. amazing are all the people gathered in Tempest for this. It ain't easy to build a facility this size. Kaijin was right. This only worked because of the, all these scientists working under the same roof. They had used assorted types of magic to create this massive diorama of sorts. The precision crafted model riding the rails was made by Kaijin himself. What's propelling this train? I could have Raphael assess it, but I made the effort to ask instead. Steam! Kaijin replied with a smile. I nodded. That made sense. For now, your only option for driving a train would be horses. That was what we had pulling the cargo carriers currently using the high ray rails. That allowed only for the same weight you could put in a carriage, of course. Using those rails improved safety and contributed to traffic management, but I can't say it made things dramatically more efficient. 
there are a proposal to employ golems and, or monsters to pull them instead, but that was still a stopgap, or still just a stopgap. We really needed to develop engines and steam engines were our top candidate. Not, of course, the type of from olden times that burned coal or whatever. We had conceived something that took the best bits from both magic and science. That's the whole reason why I called it a magic train. The concept called for an engine that would apply magic driven by magical energy or magical energy to the combustive energy created by steam. This was a sort of template for magical cores, and despite its simplicity, it still required some high-level magic tech. Magic functioned on different principles from natural phenomena. You could use it to create the effect you had in mind, but it was difficult to derive a standard rule set based on that. For example, let's say you had a candle burning inside a, clo a closed glass container. The oxygen, would, or the oxygen would quickly be replaced with carbon dioxide, snuffing out the flames. But if it was magically created flames, it would keep on burning forever. As long as the force of molecules instilled by the caster didn't run out, the flames will never disappear. Although, of course, no caster had infinite power. Based on this experiment, magical flames clearly ran on different rules from scientific phenomena. It was div thus difficult to take one magical procedure and apply it successfully to something else. That, I guess, was why nobody thought about connecting magic to physics in this world before now. Magiphysics. However, the magic... Magic physics. That's probably next. That's probably next on the chopping block. However... Magical physics. They, they could probably do that. However, the magic in this example is so-called elemental magic. Spirit magic, where Don't one borrows... Don't the old words spirit. to me. I was there when they were written. <laughs> Which... Uh, Turned oh, me wait. into a newt. A newt? I got better. I got better. <laughs> <laughs> Throw her into the pot. No, that's fine. So no. if she weighs no, as much as, much as, as a, a duck, duck, no, then no. she's just no. in the wood. No. A witch. No. Therefore, we witch. Can't, we, can't, we can't get down this. All right, keep reading. We're almost okay, at the it. end of this chapter. You got it. <laughs> okay. Spirit magic, where one borrows the powers of the spirits, is not affected by the image of the caster places on, into their spell. It's magic that utilizes the power of a spirit, something that must conform to the laws of nature. As a result, flames driven by spirit magic still consume oxygen and carbon, or produce carbon dioxide. When I fought Ifrit, the great sage taught me a thing or two about steam explosions, and that trick only worked because Ifrit's flames worked under a similar natural laws. If it was elemental magic instead, using magicules to rewrite those laws, it may have been completely ineffectual. It's also why I could use spirit magic under that holy field. Also, in the past, I used inscription magic to heat up metal and illuminate caves, but in the end, that still didn't produce enough light. Dole did a little innovating to apply the elemental magic light and change the inscription to transform magicules directly into illumination. Basically, this world lets you use magic to skip procedure and go straight to the results. That had the adverse effect of delaying scientific investigation into natural phenomena. Yep. Science based on physical phenomena was kind of cool, actually. That just cut out the middleman. Was yep. better handled using spirit magic. It's just like, right... Instant results. Uh, science based on physical phenomena was better handled using spirit magic by itself based on nature. And that's how I hit on the idea of spirit based engines in the first place. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, I think this oh, no, is that's 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 Kaijin. you. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that's you. We had been using the heat we generated in the Fords to do things like warm up baths, you know, mm. but not even I thought you could use steam this way. Kaijin gave me an impressed look. Me, I was more impressed that he actually created a steam engine based off my description alone. Well, hold on. Uh, oh yeah, okay, that's him. Well, the basic premise can be used for a lot of things. Moving pistons, turning turbines, you know, using steam or heat energy. Oh, wait, no, that's... <laughs> yeah, that's... No. That's him? <laughs> that's Rimuru? Yeah, that's still you. Is that Rimuru? Rimuru? Yeah, that's okay, still sorry. Rimuru. I was I was like, okay, yeah. it sounded like Hygen was explaining stuff. No, anyway, no, 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 moving that's... pistons. Okay, yeah, I had to read forward. Anyway, moving pistons, turning turbines, you know, using steam or heat energy can help you do physical work, or you can convert it to electricity. The latter is something to tackle later, but it looks like you've worked out pistons just fine for now. Yeah, as you can see, boss, you can get a lot of power from electricity if you use it right. He turned towards the miniature train. I had spoken to him about his team about, or and his team about electricity before. They must have kept up with the research because now he demonstrated a pretty good understanding, even better than mine, maybe. There were six cars connected to his model locomotive, each filled with little metal balls. If they were real, that was pretty hefty weight it was pulling. We tried to replicate every possible environment in this uh, test room. Right now, it's a tropical rainforest. And the next space over there is a desert climate. And next to that is an area with heavy snowfall. 
We're getting data from each room so we can make designs for pretty much any environment. Trainee was now explaining. Oh, that was Trainee? What? Oh, God. Where the fuck yeah, she come from? Where the fuck she come from? Anyway. Yeah, that, yeah, Trainee. Yeah. What the yeah, fuck? Like, what? Trainee was now explaining matters yeah, to me. Trainee, Ramirez your taking voice that for changed. <laughs> Trainee, Trainee, sorry, sorry, sorry yeah, I had a in my throat. I had a rough night, okay? She I mean, had if a you take the in her throat. Damn these garments. <laughs> Oh, okay. Not gonna judge me. Okay. Fine. And these labyrinth okay. frogs. They're everywhere. Uh, really yeah, gotta look into awesome that. Damn, these de yeah. <laughs> Damn this dry desert climate. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're everywhere here. Yeah. Trini was now explaining matters to me. Uh, Ramirez taking the opportunity to sit on her shoulder. The vampire in the room, canine sparkling, nodded their approval. Yes, yes. Glad we could be of service. I just love experiments like this. The vampire leader was a cheerful kind of guy, but definitely off kilter. I wasn't that it wasn't that he enjoyed research so much as there was no room in his mind for anything else. But I'm sure they were helping a lot. I had been provided a carefully kept notebook filled to the margins with writings. This was pulp based paper. We could have imported it from the Eastern Empires if we had any relations, but there was nothing for now. So I was having them research how to create real paper. Gyru's team was good at this sort of non headline grabbing work, and when we I left things to them, they quickly started test producing some low quality paper from tree pulp. I hadn't given any further instructions since then, but through a trial and error process, they quickly reached this current level of quality. I know they had samples to work with and documentations from me outlining the whole procedure, but it was still amazing. They deserve praise, and I resolved to give it to them. But back to the notebook. It was a neat piece of work, a series of questions, hypotheses, experiments, and results. Dynamic force and the magic fuels needed for an engine to provide it. Consecutive operation times and subsequent engine de deterioration. Estimates on maximum load and weight distribution on the freight cars. They even used up all that or used all that to calculate the stability of each room setup and figure out how fast they could operate the trains. All this data would come in handy when making the full-size locomotives. I just took a quick read through the notebook, but it seemed uh, to me like the needed theoretical work was already done. We had a working model after all, so I figured it was time to build a test engine. Unless... Hey, Veldora, uh, this isn't the only test vehicle you built so far, is it? <laughs> Well spotted. You're an intelligent slime if you've already noticed. Veldora grinned at me. Damn it. Oh, God. Mm. Veldora Veldor. grinned at me. Don't, don't, don't do that, Veldora. That's creepy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> You're scaring hey. everybody here. <laughs> Good. Yeah. That's God what we need. Fucking damn it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you probably would do that yeah. at some point. Moving on. Yeah. Ramirez sneering on his shoulder. I looked around only to find Kaijin and his team, Trainee, and even Beretta doing the same. They had all filed in at some point, standing in a row at, by one of the doors. So this means... uh, Hold on. That is Kaijin. It was a lot of hard work, you know. Summoning a fire spirit within the engine wasn't enough. You need something for power control. And if it was done manually, you'd need a decent, well-trained shaman in the train at all times. We could train enough of those for our whole fleet, maybe, but that'd take too much time. So they put together a magic circuit that automates the whole thing. It's a control board that combines the fire spirit core and the inscription magic that controls it. Put them together, and this is what you get. Bibbidi mm. bobbidi boo. Shut the Good. <laughs> Hygen slowly approached the divinity <laughs> as he spoke. Good. Normally, this is we're reading slime, not DBZ. So anyway, Kaijin slowly, yeah, come here, man. Kaijin slowly approached the door as he spoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the tiniest blast. Anyway, normally summoning spirits is where our attempts started to fall apart. Lower level spirits don't have enough power, after all. You at least needed to summon a flame salamander or something mid level like that. Maybe. Those are B plus monsters, and no normal some person could summon one and keep them stable for long periods of time. Was Ramirez involved with this? What's up? Oh, mid, like Attack on Titan being in the anime awards. <gasps> oh, 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 o
Yeah, yeah that's a little yeah, weird. That should be supernatural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah that's not, that's not quite if anything, fantasy. If anything, I, you know, I agree. There should be a supernatural category because that belongs in supernatural. That's the category. Yeah, because that's, that's yeah. the fucking and category. Like, that they would also yeah. allow for so many other things like right. horror anime. Yeah, because like ah. fantasy is like to me is like European elves, orcs, like. You know, Mishoku dwarves, that kind of stuff, dragons. Anime. See, Mishoku Tensei yeah. I agree, is a fantasy anime. Uh, yeah. But, okay, okay. It's like a feel. The, two, the two in that category that deserved to maybe have won the fantasy category were probably Mishoku Tensei and or. Made in the Abyss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Made in Abyss is definitely made fantasy. Made in Abyss that is and Mishoku natural. Tensei. <laughs> Mishoku Tensei and Made in the Abyss, but not fucking... Uh, Demon, Demon Slayer. Slayer. Demon Slayer. I think it's just because it was more anime. popular. Demon, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's just fun. a fucking popularity it's good, contest. But... Yeah, it's yeah. That sounds about popularity right. Popularity contest. Yeah, I mean it's good, but it's still like that. I think supernatural like genre should exist because like yeah. demons and like spirits and ghosts and stuff are like it's a different flavor of fantasy, but yeah, it's not fantasy. fantasy. You know what I mean? Yeah, it does not yeah. Matter. Demon Slayer, but it's, literally it's a has different... demons in the title. It's a different it's thing. You can't just lump them all in fantasy. It's like a different, yeah, different exactly, mythos. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, so anyway. So yeah. Like roll, angels and demons roll, stuff. Fix I don't your know. fucking award show. Yeah, or they probably just had to find or, some like lump thing to throw it in. Award show. Yeah, I mean, because granted, it doesn't really mean anything, be, but to be anyway. Fair, nobody takes your award show seriously. I do. I do agree with Cyberpunk 2077 being, uh, anime I think, of anime of the yeah. year. Yeah, yeah no, I agree with that. Uh, nobody agrees. Great, so. Nobody agrees with your uh, award show having uh, being like a yearly award show that includes two different years worth of shit, though. Yeah, yeah. I think well, I would. Mm. They purposely put. They purposely put shit from a previous year in there. It's gonna be really and, weird. It's gonna be really, really yeah. weird when we have Bleach in next year's stuff. And haven't they won before? I could have sworn Attack on Titan won before yes! in some other category. They're literally I feel like doing if it this wins, shit to have Attack on Titan in every fucking year. I don't By the know. Way, I feel like Titan just started back up. Yeah. Oh yeah. Part the final Their part. Final, part final, three. Final, part two. Final? <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just find I the, the dude, naming really dude, funny. The only thing. The only thing that I've seen from Attack on Titan that people are talking about is like in the background of the Titans marching on. There's this one Titan that just fucking fell down the cliff. <laughs> and that's that's, that's the only really? thing that I've seen. That that's the winner. Talking about. That's the one. Here's the thing. I don't give a shit about Attack on Titan. That's, like yeah. it has passed its prime. Like Wait, literally, gosh. it has it has gone Overstated on too long. Welcome. It has gone on for so long that it has literally, yeah. it has literally I've... outstayed its welcome. Yeah, and it's not even. Here's the thing: it's not even that. I'm sorry, it's not even that role written. Fair. No, I haven't fair. seen it, so I yeah, can't. Here's the, thing, or... here's the thing. Oh. Here's the thing. It's it's good, but it's not goaded. It's it's not One Piece good. And I know yeah. people are going to yeah, sit One here Piece and go, oh, my good. God, you brought up One Piece. You're such a basic bitch. Fuck you. so good, though. Here's the One thing. Piece is it's still really person. good, yeah. though. If you haven't read, uh, everybody that's sitting here going, oh, yeah, yeah, One mm. Piece, you haven't even fucking dived into One Piece. Mm. Most of you bitches, you looked at the number of, like, the chapters mm. or the anime. You haven't the even episodes. given it a shot. Here's the thing. Motherfucker, you don't know anything about One Piece. Uh, the story, the writing that Oda puts out there is so good. Bro, let me... All right, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to take a break real quick. It's rant Oda, time. Oda dived into... Oda did Oda did the most based thing. Oda did the most mm. based thing. I wanted to talk about this on Anime Church, but we had so many different topics. Oda did the yeah. most based thing. He at, he went over and he asked chat GPT to write a chat... Uh, to write an arc of uh, of One Piece, and it wrote, it wrote something for One Piece. And he mm-hmm. turned right around and he told it uh he it wrote like this whole thing about Chopper getting abducted by like this uh this shadow tribe of people and Robin had to go and like save Chopper and get their straw hats and everything to rescue Chopper and he was like, This is boring. No. <clears throat> Oda turned right around and told Chat GPT that the story that it wrote was so fucking mid and trash and boring, and I was like, Yes! 
And you know why? Because literally the story that it described is every other basic ass shonen arc that I've ever seen out there. And I'm like, yeah, that's not Otis shit. That's not Otis style. He would literally turn right around and go, no, that's what everybody else is doing. And that's boring and that's bullshit. Fuck off. Fuck off. Here's the thing. Even after One Piece is done, Otis still has straight out said... He's got backstory on so much shit that takes like, place before. One wait, wait, wait. There's post. That he can there's still post write. One Piece. There's post yeah. One Piece shit that he could still end up. No, no, no. I mean, implying like we're we're gonna we're gonna be alive to see you post One Piece. I mean, yeah. it'd be kind of cool. I mean, doesn't he plan on finishing it within like the next three years or so? Three to five years remember. is all that's left in One Piece. Is what mm. he said. Yeah, at least at least for the main thing he's the probably gonna have story, side things the main right? story the oh, the oh. overall main shit is basically three to five years is and now and then for I'm... the supplementary stuff to add to the even more to the experience like he's he's got backstory for fucking everything he's he's straight out saying yeah. he's like look dude i'm he's like i'm kind of done with telling the main story but like i've got all this like shit that i've written out all these backstories and everything so if Y'all want to do yeah. something with that? He's he's I mean, like the... he's like look. Make some here's all this stuff. Movies? Here's all this stuff. I've got forty movies for you, motherfuckers, if you want it. And Toei's mm-hmm. just like, yeah, all right. <laughs> One Piece ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I... Yeah, after a good while. Yeah, people make it's the true. joke. People make the joke of like, oh, and then it's sequel Two Piece, and it's like, nah, bro, there ain't gonna be two a sequel. Piece. <laughs> there Dude, ain't gonna be just a sequel. more one of the One Piece. <laughs> there ain't gonna be a sequel, but there's definitely gonna be like some spinoffs or some shit like that. Right, it won't be a mean, Boruto real, it fine. wouldn't be called. It wouldn't be called Two Piece. It would just be called the whole ass cake. The whole ass. The whole ass cake. I, I, I know nice. what it'd be called. I know exactly what it'd be called. The, the, the uh, sequel series Bikini. No. <laughs> oh, that's a no. I I still believe the One Piece no. is a One Piece swimsuit. I mean, it would explain why Roger like laughed no so piece, hard. No piece manga, a no piece manga. It's just naked, naked Nami, no naked Nami. I mean, that has happened a couple I want times. That, though. Who doesn't? Just, yeah. Zoro dude, probably because Zoro's fair, like. To be fair, this motherfucker is so mm-hmm. goaded, he could literally tell an entire chapter Ooh. of story with no dialogue. Probably like Oda, his, Oda's his the only body language and facial Oda expressions. Is the are only stupid. motherfucker that could do that. It's so yeah. crazy. He could Jesus, just, yeah. just to, just to do it, just to see if yeah. he could. He probably could write an entire chapter of One Piece. Do an entire chapter of One Piece. No dialogue. Mm-hmm. Nothing but art. I think he could do it. He could I'd do it, and it would probably mm-hmm. come across as like something fucking spectacular. To be fair, though, probably. to be fair, though, he would be ripping that off from Bakuman. Ba- oh yeah, because they did that That's in right. Bakuman, straight action. Yeah. Talk. To be fair, he could yeah. do that. He could fucking no do sound that. effects or anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. no, he could do he could do like the sound effects and stuff, but like oh yeah, but yeah. no no talking, no dialogue. Yeah, no dialogue. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, let's keep going. Uh, get anyway. top one piece, a silent week. film. A silent <laughs> film. <laughs> it's only one piece of sound. Shut Jesus. Shut, shut, shut. Shut Was Ramirez involved with this? Yeah. <laughs> as the former spirit queen, it seemed in her wheelhouse. But containing my surprise, I watched as Kaijin put his hand to the door. Um, um where are we at? There's okay. an ast- There's an asterisk. Oh. Okay. Uh, well, this is it. This is it. Should I the end of the road? Should I continue or should I pass the ball? No, we've only got a few more pages. You're finishing okay. the damn chapter. Gotcha. Whoa, this is it. It was clearly waiting. I don't know why that was yeah, snake. We cast it Charlie was waiting me on. Is Luffy. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. His body shone a lustrous black. It's Bring clearly made of magic steel. Just Bring <laughs> out your death. Yeah. Let's get Ding! arise. Yeah. Charlie that's, Chaplin. Bro, I'm having that's a the anime. Death that's crisis. The, that's the anime I want to see in like a couple of years. I can't wait for it to come out. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe my girlfriend's leveling. a necromancer. No, oh. solo leveling, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, gotcha. That does sound like a, an anime, though, too. I can't believe my girlfriend's a necromancer. Oh, god damn it. No, that sounds it's like probably a, one out there. That it like probably a, is that one. That sounds like a light novel. I can't believe my girlfriend's a necromancer. I'd probably read it. 
if not, I'm writing it. Right. So that'd be fun. Anyway, it was waiting beyond. Its body shone a lustrous black, clearly made of majesty and looking like some ominous monster of iron. Here is the result of our combined skills. Magitrain number zero. Vesta's proud voice rang out as I marveled at it. I thought we were still in the experimental stages, but it was already and it was already done. Still a test unit, perhaps, but the very first example of the train I always dreamed of. A huge step forward. We're planning to test the body's durability and performance, but we're also, we're also going to add not just freight cars, passenger cars, sleepers, and even dining rooms. Oh, this is one of them is Kaijin. I think this is Kaijin. Okay. I feel like this is growing into he's like a Rail Wars fan. Completing he's all about engine. trains. Completing the steam engine isn't the end of the story, of course. I still want to get into the nitty gritty to try to make this as complete a package as possible. Vesta and Kaijin were both excited. The other researchers just seemed just as impassioned as they looked at number zero, but I'm sure there was still room for improvement. I think that's still him. For example, regarding the electricity you discussed with us, that's some pretty tricky stuff to handle. We had a wind spirit generate lightning for us, but harnessing that energy as it looks like a, uh, as is looks like a non-starter. I'm sure it would be. Electricity can do anything, really, but it took a certain methodology to handle. Um, I guess it could be this one could be either of them. We need to develop capacitors say. first. Once we do, mm -hmm. we can use the heat to uh, the heat the steam engine generates to create electricity. It'll be a lot easier to operate a train then. So I think it's a worthwhile approach. This was all a little over my head, but Raphael was kind enough to translate technical books from Earth into the local language for me. I had already provided these to the lab, and I guess Vesta's team was making ample use of them. It was sort of like recycling magic, and if it made things smoother for us all, then bring it on. Uh, I'm going to guess think... Vesta on this one? Yeah, I'm going to guess. Oh, and about that. I wasn't sure whether to say when it came up, but I thought we could discuss it while looking inside this guy. A picture's worth a thousand words, as they say. Come on in. Wait, were they already using electricity somehow? I began to doubt myself as I followed Kaijin in, only to find a surprise waiting for me. The inside of the locomotive was bathed in a soft, gentle light. I shot Kaijin a questioning stare. We readied uh, ourselves for this the moment you gave us all those books, boss. Right, Vester? Yes. Sir Rimuru, ever since you tasked us with researching ways to use electricity, Kaijin and I have been pouring through all the materials. There were still things we hadn't grasped inside them, but with this many scientists gathered together, I thought we could get some help from them. I mean, you gotta get that flux capacitor to generate 1.1 <laughs> gigawatts, right? The flux capacitor wasn't worth generating, uh, though. Uh, uh, <laughs> Stare well, I mean, once, once this baby hits 88 miles per hour... She's gonna, gonna get weird. Hey, get a slingshot. All right. All right. Make sure uh, to always wear your seatbelt. Uh, I think that's Kaijin. Right. That sort of thing. So they help find answers to our questions. Plus, when we looked at that girl over there, Lady Ramirez's elemental colossus, that is, it just blew our minds. After all, it's basically a completed version of the Magic Armor Soldier project we had abandoned. Certainly. Having a real-life sample to work with made easier, or made things easier to grasp. The new Elemental Colossus currently under construction was already being used as an experimental test bed, it seemed. Very much so. Reading those books and gaining valuable feedback from everyone else made us realize our great mistake. Back then, we thought that spirit and elemental magic were the same thing during our experiments. That's where we went, war war we went wrong. Rim wrong. We went wrong. Yeah. We, that's where we use Winwar. They cleaned it all up. Rimuru, the Libyans! Good. Oh, God. Good. Rimuru, the Libyans! Uh oh, the Libyans! Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> Yeah. I was <laughs> also, oh, we gotta get it. we gotta get that in there. One point twenty one gigawatts. Oh, <laughs> oh, I fucking Good. loved it. This is how so much dumb. does yeah. it generate? How much do they generate? The hell is a gigawatt? <laughs> like they tested <laughs> to find wrong. They tested out Good. using Ranga as a test passenger. <laughs> oh god. He's just like <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> Sticking his face out the window. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I think this is Kaijin with the yeah. yeah so, so we, we looked, looked at the sample to verify what we were missing. What they found was that different types of magic can run by wholly different sets of rules. Ramirez's elemental colossus ran on spirit magic, or more specifically, it used a summon spirit. Kaijin's team was trying to operate a spirit core with elemental magic, but they just couldn't get it started up. Uh, this doesn't... Um, Our answer to this... Um, yeah. Our answer to this, unfortunately, was to up the magic output. This led to magic-generated heat with nowhere else to go, and the experiment ended in failure. I see. Although, maybe the Colossus was arranged like this only because Ramirez couldn't use em elemental magic. Regardless, that wound up being the key to its success. The Colossus was driven by a primitive sort of spirit core, but with all the scientists on hand here, they were apparently on their way to, re to restoring its full abilities. Once they fully analyzed the master core I created for it, it'd be a full-fledged magic core again. I don't know whether to be happy or sad about this. Me neither. Uh, Here's yeah. this theory I gave up on, and we only failed because we had an, an assumption wrong. Here was something that, after all the research, showed no sign of working based on theory alone. But once they solved a little misunderstanding, everything just worked. I'm sure all Kaijin could do was laugh about it. <laughs> I mean, hoo -hoo. <laughs> shmish, shmish, right? Shmish, shmish, shmish. Shmish. Right. Shmish. Or right. So if we have a magic core, we can convert magicals energy. Although this energy comes in several types too, it's hard to easily explain. This locomotive, uh, this locomotive converts magicals into heat energy to work a turbine. It can also generate electricity, as you said, Sir Rimuru. So that's why we can light up each car so brightly. What a surprise! I mean, seriously. So this car was driven by a complete magic core. Giving magicals to each type of assorted spirit provides you the ability to convert them to useful energy, and you could even circulate this energy around. Electricity created by the turbine could be fed back to the magic core. They said storing. The turbine. the turbine. The turbine can be fed. Turbine. <laughs> Ready to twerk. It's turbine. Yeah. Oh, for beard. Ready yeah. for work. Ready to twerk. No man. <laughs> no. Can be fed back uh, to the magic board. My brain. Is the dance he okay. does? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Put that Story in my for head. later use. That's yes. <laughs> good. I was sure they could generate electricity more directly, but apparently that made things harder to control. So they made it so the system used what the steam engine generated. When it comes to electricity, high output isn't necessarily all you want. You need both a power plant and a transformer, not to mention storage batteries to keep More that energy. The I was going to say, which one is Star Stream, Sunwave, Shockwave? Who are we talking about? And Megatron. Are we talking about DC or AC? <laughs> Galvatron. Ooh. Oh, Megatron. well, you're, not, you're talking about some serious firepower there. Waspinator. <laughs> We need the Optimus Generator. It's the best one out there. Nobody watched Beast Wars? Okay, I'm sad. <laughs> no. Optimus well, Beast Wars movie is Grimlock! Good. Yeah, you need the Waspinator. Yeah, 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 this is yeah, fucking yeah, voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not to mention storage yeah. batteries to keep all the energy. Yes. All you need <laughs> is jazz a little is... jazz. Jazz. And they were... I don't know why they made him so jive in the movie. It was kind of interesting, but anyway. And they were handling all that just with a magic core. Plus, the magical fuel was all around you in the air, and if that wasn't enough, you could just use a handy magic stone to power it. The running time depending on the magic fuels, but in a rich environment without aggressive operation, it was essentially forever with maintenance downtimes. Truly a miracle power source. Um, Veldora. Yeah. Well, Rimuru. Surprised. Even we can do stuff like this when we get serious. I hated to see Valdora and Ramirez brag, but it really was amazing. Credit where credit is due. This is really great. Keep up the good work, guys. Certainly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's smooth sailing from here on out. They knew they were being complimented. Now I wanted to brag to someone. It wouldn't be long before our nation had a train system, and after all that, our magic trains would start sweeping across the world. It was exciting to imagine. I think that's Kaijin. So, boss, there's something I wanted to discuss. Oh, what's that? Titties. I mean, <laughs> well, we wanted yeah. to well. hold a friendly icebreaker to celebrate the completion of Magic Train Number Zero, and along those lines, uh, a mass or ah, uh, a massive all-out drinking bash and party in the name of a friendly icebreaker, huh? And at my favorite nightclub too, of course. Well, fine, perfect. All right, everyone, let's drink out the rest of the evening. Aw, oh, thanks, boss. Woo! I know you oh, sponsored geez. that fan, that fancy tavern, so I couldn't go around reserving it for just for ourselves. <clears throat> Kaijin flashed me a relieved smile. 
No, it's not really the kind of place I'd invite busloads of friends to party in. In fact, I don't think everyone here could even fit inside. Even for Kaijin, money wasn't necessarily the problem. Well, how about I have some of them or have them set up some outdoor seating? We can close it off to the public for tonight and call in a, pre, in a, a staff appreciation event. Given how, I, I don't know, I was fucking mouthful of taffy, but anyway. Given how well everyone worked with one another already, Icebreaker was a misnomer. So I decided to cover the bill for our party and thank them for their efforts. Though, really, to be honest with you, any excuse was fine. There's no better way to celebrate something than with a good drink. Whether it's little, a little get-together or a company event, as long as it's time spent with one another, it's all the same. And what luck. We happened to be in an elf-run town that was like paradise on Earth. Time for everyone to share in the joy and charge our energy for the future. <laughs> How understanding of you. We can't wait, sir. We can't wait. We can't wait. We can't wait, sir. Yeah. We can't wait, sir. We can't wait, sir. We can't wait, We can't wait, sir. We can't wait, We can't wait, Patrick. I mean, sir. Patrick, that's twice you've done this. We can Does everyone fucking all at once? We can't wait, sir. Yeah. It's everybody from every universe all across the well, fucking world. We can't wait, Sir Rimuru. We can't yeah, wait for the pop, Sir Rimuru. Let's do it. Yeah. Didn't think I'd get <laughs> we can't wait, Peter. I mean, Sir Rimuru. Jesus hey, Christ! Hey, it's just all of, like hey, we can't wait, we Sir Rimuru. We can't Rimuru. wait, Sir Rimuru. Yeah, we can't wait. Sir find Rimuru. elves appealing. <laughs> everybody wait, finds Sir elves Rimuru. appealing. <laughs> Dude, everybody, we we can't can't wait. Wait. Bro, 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 everybody loves yeah. titties. Who doesn't? <laughs> anyway, anyway, I don't know if you even picked that. I tried to just the last one. Anyway, anyway, moving on, moving on. The staff. We have, and we apparently have everyone so on the long, fucking planet. We have taken <laughs> so long getting through this chapter that, that I'm we're sorry. not doing chapter two at this point. That's that's fine. I, I, wait, right. we were doing chapter two tonight. This first we time we were. Here. We were doing chapter two. It's he was word. in the fucking uh, title. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Oh, so. The staff, just as excited, and apparently everyone on the fucking planet, just as excited as Valdora, all thanked me in unison as if they practiced regularly. Even the vampires enjoyed some alcohol. I guess not requiring fresh blood widen their palates a bit. And in the midst of the celebration, this is so great. Now I can drink on someone else's coin, too. Yes, it's quite wonderful. Oh. Yes, it's quite wonderful, isn't it? But be careful you don't drink too much. None of that, the Lady Ramirez. Sir Remer told me that underage drinking is strictly prohibited. A certain pipsqueak tried to seizing the moment to wet her whistle, but she was thankfully stopped in time. <laughs> By me. Rough sketch. Dude, Ramirez Rough is the oldest scratch. motherfucker here. I know. Yeah, but she's also the like, smallest. So. Yeah, so like one shot is like probably her entire body. <laughs> Just, <clears throat> she gets a drop. It's like, motherfucker, yeah. let me drink. <laughs> She's a you get one Lord. drop of alcohol She's and that's it. And then you're Lord. wasted. She, can, she literally has the resistances. Oh, yeah. I forgot <laughs> about that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, they can turn it off, can they? Yeah, but she can also regulate it. She's been alive longer mm. than everybody. She knows how to regulate that shit. She's not she knows how to regulate her. <laughs> She's not, wait, she's not who? I got a regulator. Good. Oh, I'm in a weird mood today. I'm in an extremely weird mood today. Yeah. You know what? I, I take it back. I, I don't know why I find it funny. I'm in a good mood. We will. Start yes. yes. Chapter, I won't make us liars. We will start chapter two. Okay. We got a little bit of time. We got a little okay. bit of time. We got about. We got about half an hour. Might as well. All right. We might as well start okay. a little bit of Diablo stuff. Just a little bit. Just, just the tip. Okay. Just yeah, Diablo. just the tip. Just the tip. Just the, tip. All right. the only I just the like... tip of Diablo. Just the tip. All right. All right. Should I? The right. tip of his iceberg, if I was you were. About the tip of the back of this hand. The demon trampled across the. <laughs> you mean your nails? Realm. The demon trampled across the dark realm like a savage beast. Beyond the gates of hell lay a spirit realm. One could call the land of the dead or even hell itself. There he was, annihilating demons like a living manifestation of violence. The powerless ran screaming, the more powerful banding together to defend themselves. But to that demon it was helpless struggling. All forces fell to his might, and his rampage continued. Demons were kind of spiritual life form. 
If you destroyed the physical body of one, it, c it would self-regenerate over time. Perhaps he knew this because he held nothing back, showing mo no mercy to anyone coming his way. The name of this personification of violence was Diablo. <laughs> it's been so long since my last visit. Quite a number of chumps have sprung up in the meantime, haven't they? Assembling a group of these will accomplish nothing. I need to find my old friends. His old friends were those comparable to him. His mission during this long journey was to recruit them. <laughs> I'm sure they have what it takes to make Sir Rimuru satisfied. With those words, Diablo teleported away and disappeared leaving nothing but the carcasses of those who failed to correctly gauge his might. My to correctly gauge his power level. My inspections were complete. I had a grasp of where we currently stood. I could see the end of rail installation work yet. We were considering three lines for now, from the Dwarven Kingdom to Tempest, from Tempest to the Kingdom of Blumund, and from Blumund to the Kingdom of Farmanus. There was also a route that forked south from the line of Dwargan, running past Lake Sisu, stopping gro stomping grounds of the Lizardmen, on its way to Urizania. In addition, we had to build a highway from Blumund, uh, from the Blumen line to Thalion, which included a tunnel through the Kusha Mountains. A rail line along that route would be considered later, but I had to expect it'd come well into the future. I'd really like to build a railway to the ocean somewhere soon, so we can get seafood for cheaper. Going forward, I also envisioned a trunk line between Blumend and the Kingdom of Inglacia, but either way, completing this whole network would take a lot of time, and we still had more trains to develop. With our test locomotive completed, we were officially over the hump. Hey, Wednesday's passed. <laughs> yeah. But it's Monday! <laughs> Hump day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, last Wednesday. Um. Yeah. Fine. Anyway. Anyway. Now we just had to run that thing to the ground in a trial and error test process. We had the exact energy drive I wanted, but development wouldn't end there. It had to be comfortable to ride in, and we had to eliminate noise concerns with the surrounding areas. These were already quieter than normal steam trains, but the speedier these got, the louder they'd be. A research team led by Kaijin was tracking these smaller details, digging deep into them, and working out theoretical solutions. I wanted his team to record all their proceedings, because I figured it'd help us with future developments. Of course, the magic core was the hardest part, and with that completed, I could let Kaijin handle the rest of the locomotive. With this pro... Uh, when his project got uh, with this project, when, God damn it, read man, shut up. When this project got started, I covered all the expenses with our national budget, even giving them a little more money, as much as it made Molly Miles' chins wiggle, jiggle, <laughs> wiggle, 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 jiggle, wiggle, 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 jiggle, 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 jiggle. I. I was now an occasional visitor to the project, giving me more chances to befriend the researchers and have in-depth conversations. They were interested in my otherworlder knowledge, apparently, so they'd ask for my opinions on this and that. A anything very tricky, Raphael handled for me. It worked faster than a quantum supercomputer, so any calculation was completed in an instant. No reason not to use it, uh, to make use of it. After work was done, it was time to socialize. Our evening haunts didn't all have to be high-end nightclubs. If people were encountering walls in their research, we'd hit the city debating among ourselves and forgetting our problems. I kept up with them late into the night, although I didn't get paid any overtime, oddly enough. I should note that our generous budget wasn't being entirely devoted to the drinking tabs. They really were contributing to science and technology, though, so I let it slide a bit. By the way, between Veldora Ramirez and me, Ramirez was earning the highest salary at the moment. Even subtracting her dungeon maintenance fees, we were ranking in a massive profit from the labyrinth, and she took 20% of that. 
Our initial goal of two gold coins a day now seemed quaint. We were making over 20 uh, on average, the equivalent of at least $20,000. Ramirez used her cut to pay Trini, her sisters, and Beretta, but I reckon she ended every month up nearly a hundred gold coins. Veldor and I, meanwhile, were paid equally one gold coin a day from the National Treasury. As Master of the Labyrinth, Veldora also got an allowance from Ramirez, and since his magicules were a constant boon to us, the Treasury sometimes awarded him special payments. Thus, he was definitely making more money than I was. Of course, I had my own hidden revenue streams and business involvement, so I wasn't exactly destitute either. I was going to say, Veldora gets paid more than Rimuru? God, no. <laughs> Rimuru technically makes more than both of them. That's because he has, like, his own revenue systems outside of just, like, yeah. he has his own... Yeah, until, until that last part, it seemed like... Oh. <laughs> owns the damn town. He gets most of the money. That's what Zen I'm. Master. That's what made me confused. I love Zen Master. Ao, can I get a job working for Rebrew? Yeah, go dungeon diving. Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. You'd be like yeah. everybody else. Go dungeon diving. I mean, there's no risk if you had the bracelet on. You yeah, die, and then you come back. So I mean, yeah, and you uh, just Veldora, get stronger. No, someone put Veldora. I'm getting paid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He has to get. Paid. Dude, dude. Veldora has to get paid. Like, Veldor knows yeah. he's getting paid. Of course, he knows I have cut. my own... He knows uh, what he's worth. Inspired by everyone's suddenly impressive work ethic, I resolved to put in more of an effort. First, it was time to get serious about the physical body vessels, I promised Diablo. Ramirez was my assistant. We'd also be working on bodies for trainee oh. sisters. And I wanted to get her feedback. <clears throat> She kindly accepted the request, although she was already whining to me about needing more personnel. I really need I really need someone to handle all the odd jobs I need, and I have a few <laughs> other things I want to ask you for, too. With Trainee and Beretta alone, I can't quite seem to keep up with all my work. I thought she just wanted more people to brag about herself, to, but recalling just how busy Trainee and the others looked... I reconsidered. Plus, Ramirez wasn't just my assistant. She had her own mission, craft a new elemental colossus. Its heart, the core of the whole thing, was complete. I had a skeleton and a framework in place, as well as a sample. Elemental, uh, as a sample elemental colossus to work with. I figured we could just proceed based on that, but modifications always take a lot of time. Kaijin's hands were full with the trains, and Vester was hard at work by himself picking up his old armored soldier project again. He was already lending a hand to Ramirez in his spare time, and I worried he was overworking himself a bit. This was going to be a uh, built into the completed. Uh, this was going to be built into the completed magic core, so I want to get some test data, and for that we'd need as many people as possible. <coughs> what about Veldora? Ah, yes. What about the master indeed? Whenever I ask him for some detailed piece of work, he disappears. I see. Maybe not worth relying upon, then. It makes some sense to me. Veldora's Veldora, always busily running from one place to the next. I thought he'd be a bother to most people, but he actually wasn't. He was smart, despite his personality, and I suppose he w really was helping out a lot. He certainly loved being the center of attention, so instead of asking him to assist Ramirez... I felt it was better to just let him do his own thing. He probably has a Naruto run, too. <laughs> All right, I'll round up some. We are fighting dreamers. <clears throat> Great, thanks. <laughs> With that promise, I began pounding, uh, pondering who to select. <laughs> pounding? Mm. Well, then. Interesting. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The day oh, someone said Naruto, and he's getting the, the band on. The days then proceeded by peacefully as ever until one day I can't see when shit. they came along. The Fire Nation attacked. No, then they mm. came along. Yeah, the Fire Nation. All right, here we go, guys. Here's where the fun begins. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Right in my office, atop my desk, was a huge pile of documents requiring my approval. I couldn't this guess how long it'd usually take to process all these, but in my case... I left it to Raphael. It nimbly evaluated all the proposals, re rearranging them by priority level. It approved or rejected them, and then I applied my stamp, uh, all in a continuous flow. Maybe it wasn't that taxing, but this kind of rote work was always a pain to me. 
Silently, I stamped away, wishing Diablo were here to handle this. Time for a break. Returning to slime mode, I lazed around on my sofa. This always felt great. The softness of my body and the elasticity of the cushions. Put together, it <coughs> felt like 20. a ball pit full of feathers. Now that uh, sleeping required a trick or two for me, and this was my secret little heaven right here, then I heard a knocking. I wanted to keep chillaxing for a bit longer, like a baller, but someone was Don't there. Don't be ball up, fuck up. Ah, well. <clears throat> switching to human form, I sat on my chair. Come in, I replied, making sure my pose was just right. The door opened, revealing Shuna. She bowed at me. Sir Rimuru, you have a visitor. He gave his name as Dino, and he says you know who he is? Just as expected, a visitor was here for me. But Dino, though? There was only one Dino I could possibly know of. He's a demon lord, isn't he? Part of the octogram? What's he here for? A demon lord? Should I ask my brother to assemble our troops, just in case? No, that's all right. If we come to blows, just get me Benny Maru and Shion. But I doubt we will. If I had to guess, he's come to check things out. I reassured the concerned Shuna and stood up. There seemed to be a little worry about... Uh, there seemed to be little to worry about. I think Dino did say he wanted to stop by during the Walpurgis meeting, didn't he? I kind of ignored it then, but I guess he was serious. <clears throat> Very well, I will make the arrangements. With a nod, Shuna guided me to the room where Dino was waiting. It's helpful to have a lot of rooms for occasions like this. Then you can choose one for the situation. Merchants and the nobility can have ornate parlors framed... Uh, famed monsters or suspicious people can be shown simple but solidly built rooms, if only because they might cause expensive damage otherwise. Thus, Dino was waiting in a functional, if not very flashy-looking chamber. <clears throat> when I came in with Shuna, I found Dino looking pretty well casual. In fact, he was sprawled out on the sofa, taking full advantage despite being a guest. He certainly didn't care what people thought about him. Or better or Draw me like one of your worse. French girls. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sorry. Hey, nice to see you. Doing well? He greeted me from the sofa, showing no sign of getting up. Shuna wrinkled her nose, but silently bowed and left the room, no doubt, to fetch some tea. Great, thanks, I said as I took a seat facing him. I got a lot of problems to deal with, so things aren't exactly chill, but I took a closer look at Dino. He looked just as blasé and unaffected as the last time I met him, but still, his attitude suggested I'd better keep my guard up. No wonder Shuna was wary of him. You got problems? That sucks. Yeah, kind of. I'm still pretty new to being, uh, to demon lording, so nothing's going easy for me yet. But what brings you here? Oh, me? Well, I said I'd visit you here, so here I am. His reply was rather brisk. Sounded like a lie to me. <coughs> We both quickly fell into silence, but just then, Shuna came back with some tea and snacks, navigating the quiet chamber like nothing was amiss. Hastily laying everything out, she bowed again and left the room. She really is a professional. I took a sip of tea and turned my eye toward Dino. He was the first to relent. Well, to tell you the truth, I got kicked out of Dagrule's place. Huh? Yeah, you know, I'm kind of homeless, so I'd been hanging out at Dagrule's yeah. place. I'm also penniless, so... Whoa, this is a demon lord? You may be honest, ah. but this guy's bad news, isn't he? So I thought about what I ought to do, and I remembered that Dagrel's sons had nice things to say about their time in your country, so now I'm looking for a place here. I couldn't show him a single iota of mercy. No, you can't. I immediately turned down the request. What? Hmm? The room fell silent again, Dino reacting like a like he never pictured me saying no. <clears throat> if he really was that oblivious... No, if he really was that oblivious, that surprised me even more. Yes, I knew him, but I had no obligation to house such a sketchy drifter. Already I could tell this was the kind of guy who never worked a day in his life. W wait. I want you to give me a sec, okay? I mean... What do you want me to do? Go die in the wilderness? No, get a job. Are you crazy? <coughs> To me, staying out of the working class is part of my style. I've never earned any money the past few hundred years, and I've never paid for any of my food or drink. 
Well, there you go. You're, penny, you're penniless because you don't work. No wonder you can't pay at restaurants. Wow, impressive. You can leave after you're done eating that, okay? The sooner someone like this was out of your hair, the better. <laughs> Dang. I mean, nice. I mean, you got to imagine no his luchas. resume yeah. if he hasn't worked for like a few hundred years. Ignoring him, I reached out for my snack in front of me, a fluffy cream puff to go with the tea. Delicious. Doubt I'll ever grow sick of this. Dino looked a bit panicked, but he followed my lead, took a bite, and suddenly his eyes changed. All right, I'll become a citizen of this country, so let me serve you. <laughs> Jesus. Wait, what? This I mean, just... struck me like a lightning bolt. What? A bolt of lightning! <laughs> ah! <laughs> the hell is a chicken what? <laughs> anyway. All right. What? Look, why are you coming in here and... No, I'm serious. If I can eat stuff like this every day, I have no regrets. Rimuru. Um, I mean, let me call you Sir Rimuru. Your wish is my command. I told him I wasn't going to hire him. Uh, I know we've met before at all, but it was just that one time, okay? What do you really want? Finishing my cream puff, I gave Dino a stern look as I sipped my tea. <clears throat> His eyes darted around, a habit he shared with Ramirez, except he wasn't nearly as cute. But giving up, he shrugged and dropped the couch suit surfer act. Well, the way Guy puts it, I'm probably best off here in this country. He didn't tell me why, though. He's selfish like that. It's a pain in the ass if you defy him, and I really did get kicked out of Dagrel's place, and I got sick of thinking about it, so I just came over. Guy? That redhead? Yeah, that redhead. Hmm. <laughs> he didn't seem to be lying. Guy must have actually said that, but why me? Understood. He is very likely the subject Guy Crimson dis uh, disliked supporting this. It is very likely the subject Guy Crimson <laughs> dislikes supporting the subject Dino and wishes to have you care for him instead. Dude, mm. way no to be kidding. blunt with it, but that did seem likely. Oh, right. I got a letter from Guy. Dino took it out and handed it to me. Between the seal and the eerie force oozing from it, I could definitely yeah. spot Guy Crimson's mark. The entire contents of the letter. Take care of Dino for me. <laughs> Guess I wasn't wrong yours then. Now. If Dino was carrying this around, he must have been mooching off Guy for a while. Apparently, I was having the hot potato thrown in my direction for now. <laughs> I don't no, know. It says, it... No take backs, bitch. Is it kind of weird that I like... <laughs> Is it kind of weird that I like him or I like the concept of like, you know, this super powerful demon lord just being like a total just a drifter? Just a, oh, no, no. Yeah, like, no, no, no. Guys, no, no, no. Here's the difference. This isn't a super powerful demon lord. This is a fallen angel. Uh, this oh. is an angel that fell and became a demon lord. This is a lazy ass angel that became a demon lord. That's demon. Uh, if you ever have. Uh, auditions for this guy i could try i can do my I best fucking this. tired oh, asshole said, oh, oh, said, oh yeah no take back bitch p.s yeah yeet <laughs> god damn yeet. it yeet. the letter says he's your problem now thanks <laughs> <laughs> it'd be even better if it just yeah he's he's yours now that's it with he's a big heart have fun. yeah it's like yeah so, yeah, yeah he's have apparently, fun with that. apparently i was having the hot potato thrown in my direction so we good no we're <laughs> not good Irritated, <laughs> I thought matters over. This was a pain in the ass, but antagonizing Guy was ill-advised. He was on a level of his own among demon lords, and I doubted I could beat him now. It'd be safer, certainly, to accommodate Dino than tangle with Guy. So do I just grin and bear it? If I do, I'm not going to let him screw, uh, screw around. I never invited him as a guest, and I didn't want to set a bad precedent. Then I remembered... This guy's subservient to Ramirez, isn't he? And she said she needed more staff. Maybe this is actually perfect timing. I can't let my guard down around Dino. But whether he meant it or not, he did offer his services. So I may as well reach out and accept him. Yes, let's make him Ramirez's assistant. I grinned at him. All right, but you're going to have to work. What did you say? Quit acting work. so sharp, dude. You told me seconds ago that my wish was your command. Bottling my frustration, I tried to explain the job in question to Dino. <laughs> of course, when I say work, it's really simple, actually. I want you to be an assistant to Ramirez. Ramirez? She's here, too? She sure is. 
She's helping with a lot of my work. Huh? I thought she was, like, just holed up in her labyrinth all day. Looks like Dino thought Ramirez was a kindred soul. I could see why, but these days she was actually working pretty hard. No, she's pitching in around here now, and between you and me, I think she's having a lot of fun. I want to focus on developing, but I have all these other things keeping me busy, so she's really a big help uh, to me. <laughs> I'd never tell her that, since it'd go to her head, but it was truly how I felt. It stunned Dino into silence for a bit, but after a few moments, he gingerly spoke up. So, so what kind of work would she have me do? He sounded really against it. I thought about telling him, but maybe not right now. Better to just put him on the job and teach him whatever he needs to know on site. Well, mm. no need to fret it. Whatever you're able to do is welcome, but let me show you to your workplace first. Mm, all right, don't expect too much from me. Mm? Oh, don't act that way before you even start. I don't think, I think you'll be just fine. Probably you'll only be following Ramirez's directions, so with a pang of anxiety still fresh in my brain, I decided to take Dino to our personal factory on floor 100. Laboratory? Oh, sorry. Laboratory. I don't know why I said Laboratory. factory. Yeah. Okay. No, put him in the yeah. factory. Factory. Angel yeah. labor, angel labor okay. laws yeah. don't exist here. This is my lab. <laughs> Bark. And this is my laboratory. <laughs> anyway. That I also work in. Taking the direct trip there, we proceeded past Veldora's chambers, the large room he used as his lair for engaging challengers, and his private quarters behind that. He was nowhere to be found, either. I wondered where he went. Probably out goofing around somewhere. Dude, why are there so many magicules around? Oh, that's Veldora's room in there. Don't go in, okay? He's pretty selfish, so he gets pissy if anyone touches his stuff. Um, Veldora lives here? I've been mm -hmm. wondering since the last Walpurgis, how are you two connected exactly? We're friends is all. Friends? You seem like more than acquaintances to me, yeah, but, well, Dino was usually a little droopy-eyed, but now they were opened a bit more out of surprise. So that's why Veldora seemed to disappear from my detection? He was hiding in Ramirez's labyrinth? Uh, not exactly. He disappeared because he learned how to control his magicules. He used to let his aura pour out of him, so there were tons of magicules all over the place. If I wanted to invite a bunch of visitors in here, I couldn't really have that, now could I? So I had him practice controlling his aura. Huh? Veldora, <laughs> ruler of the forest of Jura, and now he's holding his aura back so well that not even I can detect it? Him? The agitated Dino must have thought I made it sound too easy, but it was the truth. Huh? I mean... He was pretty amenable to it. Otherwise, I'd say the majority of people in this city would have would be having problems right now. Y yeah, but, I mean, all that magical energy he had. Until the hero sealed him away, people feared him as this flying disaster, his aura spreading across the world. So why? That sounded pretty mean to me, although it was probably the truth, given his past with Luminous. He must have misbehaved a lot. <clears throat> well, I suppose he's changed a little. Now if I ask him to do something, he'll actually listen to some extent. He's not that selfish any longer. Didn't you say he was selfish a moment ago? Oh, did I? Understood. You mm. did. Oh. Mm. Yes, oh, but Mac. I mean, it's never that bad. But that aura control, remember? In a situation like this, it was best to change the subject as soon as possible. I decided to tell Dino about what happened when I released Veldora. And with his aura, I told him he'd look cooler if he held it back, so he practiced pretty hard. It was tough for me, too, helping him with it. It was tough, but worth it. Not that we had much choice anyway. As he was, uh, as he was, I couldn't possibly show him around to others. R really? Wow, Rimuru, you're definitely, you definitely live up to my expectations. Weren't you just trying to bum free meals for me? You might try to sound all cool right now, but you can't trick me. I'm amazed you actually managed to tame Veldora, he continued, still looking impressed. Take your medicine. Yeah, no. take your medicine. <sighs> also, how's the motorcyclist came by? Yeah, no! that's another thing. No. You can't tell oh, yeah. me what to do! 
<laughs> Shut up, mom. Bitch, don't tell me what to do. You're not my real mom. You're not my real, my real mom. You're just a computerized voice. You're not my real robo mom. <laughs> yes. You're not my real robo mommy. Robo mom. Really though, Milam's way more here, selfish dude. than he ever was, and even she couldn't mouth off against Frey. Everyone has people they know better than to mess around with. Well, Veldora's hardly the only selfish brat I had to deal with. Milam too. I regal. <laughs> I, I reg. I regaled Dito, no, oh, no, regaled yeah, you're right. Dito with the story of how I met Millam and how intensely unfair she acted toward me. She wasn't here, so I was free to speak my mind. Telling him all about her most recent annoying nonsense, I also told him about some of Veldora's terrible exploits as well, figuring I could ask him which one he thought was the worst. There was a lot I had to talk about, and it seemed to put Dino in a state of shock, Unable to even comprehend half of it after a certain point, I never did find out which was the worst on his in his mind. <laughs> and that's where we're going to stop. Woo. Yes. Page ninety-one. Shmear, shmear, shmear. Yes. Forty-five percent through the book. Yep. It's it's still gonna take us a while to get through chapter three, guys. We will get to mo some more Diablo stuff. <laughs> It's just, it's just. Uh, but that bro, will be next week. Bro, ah, uh, we got yeah, to, bro. we got to Dino, we got to Dino, and that was the fun part. Dino, Dino, Dino. the got, fucking Dino. moocher demon lord. Dino. We got to Dino, and maybe, maybe next week we'll get to Fred and Wilma. Who knows? Well, Wilma, Wilma, I'm home. Start not, cooking not and don't Wilma. spare the sparrow. Oh, Wilma, shit. <laughs> well, don't spare the sparrow. Oh, shit. I fucked it up. Not Velma. That show sucked. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I wanted to stop. Right, yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> what did you do? That fucking sucked. <laughs> hey, Fred. That was terrible. All right. Anyway. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. That was a lot of fun. Mm. It is. We oh, yeah. We interrupted poor Shim so <laughs> It's okay. It's really funny shit. It's okay. But it's really funny. funny. I thought we would it's get funny. through that chapter so much faster. It's funny. No, we're too no. silly for that. We're too yeah. dumb. This is we're normal. You should know this by now. Fine. We're oh, some dumb motherfucking me. bitches. Notice dumb. me. Oh. Yeah. Notice me, chat. Notice, Notice me. me. <laughs> No. Okay, this is getting weird. All right, so we got so we got Dino. He's gonna be joining. Yes. I didn't Gino, Dino joined the party. I didn't talk about that because I wanted to be a surprise. I don't talk yes. about everything. Oh, that's a Zen Master little... noticed us all. Yay! I love that little uh, accessory that you have there. It makes me. It makes me smarter. It makes gives me orders. For my leader. Smarter. Smarter. Vex. <laughs> Like, yeah. Vox oh, like fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. Vex from Vox Machina. Am I hot yeah. like them too? It's the feather. Yeah. 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 Do you have a second character, by the by? Hmm. What do you mean? Yeah, Moon. Does Moon? Oh, have a I was gonna say. Uh, second character. What do you mean? For uh, 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 uh the the freaking uh, 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 Destiny. Oh, Destiny. No, I just have the one. Okay. Have you? What benefit would you have having a second character? Have you thought I, about I, different a class? Character? Yes. Oh. Um. I would actually like to make a uh a titan. A titan. Eat some crayons, you know. Okay. Uh, Steph, hello, I could Brad, fall. the anime panda man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I hello. joined for the degeneracy, and I feel as though it's at a stable point right now, but it will increase throughout the night. Okay. Well. Well. Well, we're kind of done for the night, actually. We, we, so we, the reason it's at a stable point is because we just finished. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's stabilized because we're, we're winding I mean, down. We can bring back a little bit of the degeneracy. Just get us started on fucking Back to the Future again, but you know. no, <laughs> no. No! Eighty-eight miles an hour. <laughs> the fuck is a gigawatt? <laughs> oh man! It's the new uh, dance. It's the new dance. You dance like you got capacitor. ants in your pants, and you've been, and you've been hit with a a bolt of lightning. 
I'm both to like it. So that's what that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do, buddy. We will take you through. We will take you through with a Titan. I will. Titan. I will help you run through with a Titan. Through Titan. Lightfall. Yeah, through campaign. Yeah, we'll, we'll run through. I still gotta finish with the hunter. That's fine. I will one. help you finish with that too. Cool. I can run you through with that. Yes. No problem. No problem. Yeah. The Titan's like going to be interesting not because, because I'm blind, actually going to be not I have never seen any of the Back to the Future movies. I do not get some of the references. <laughs> That's right. What? That's right. So I, I haven't what watched Back to the possible? Future and I still get, like, some, you don't of get some of the references. And I'm like, sir, sir, the internet is a thing. You can just look yes. at some of the basic references. You I, I do need to watch the movie as well. Or the movies. Apparently there's multiple. There's Doc, three. Isn't there not enough road for us to to get to the to build up enough energy? To Whatever. get to, there's not going to be enough road to reach 88 miles per hour. That's roads, the one. Where we're going, we don't need. We don't need we don't roads. Need no roads. Yep. So why don't you make like a tree and get out of here? It's make but like trees a tree don't move. and leave. You sound like an idiot when you say it wrong. Anyway, guys, that's it for us. We've had a wonderful one. We will mm -hmm. see you again with more of Chapter Two next week. Woo! Until yeah. then, until then, uh, you guys take care. Thank you. I will. Uh, I will probably be starting up my uh, thing on my stuff on my on my specific stuff i am gonna have to raise the money for on your stuff and things i am, gonna, to, them I am gonna actually have to raise the money for my motherboard it's going out mm. it's going out fast oh so yeah i'm gonna need that's to unfortunate down down yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna have to replace the motherboard and get the thermal paste very very soon so yeah, the room paste won't be that expensive. The room paste is very cheap, but uh, I will have to get a new, fifteen bucks maybe. I will have to get a new motherboard very very soon. So mm. yeah, the SATA ports are going out. Um, oh fun! So, so here's the thing: when everybody sees me type and they're like, "What is this gobbledygook?" I've typed the whole ass fucking words out, but my keyboard goes in and out because of the SATA ports. So, mm. Yeah, sounds like me on an internet. Ah, I've typed the whole must fucking annoying. sentence. So you're like, hey, why don't you play keyboard and mouse? I can't. Mm. I can't. Because it doesn't register half of the inputs. I can't. I literally can't. That makes me sad. Yeah. So, uh, that having been said, though, guys, thank you so much for coming by, hanging out with us. Really, really yeah, thank really you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. We will be back again next Monday. We'll also be here talking about uh all sorts of topics on anime church also holy shit guys i didn't know it was coming so soon what are these announcements we got to talk about uh guy since it's coming up so soon uh a anime and stuff are not anime and stuff fucking on anime church looks like we're gonna one of the topics we're gonna talk about is what's coming on with the spring lineup how did oh, we yeah. miss yeah. season two of michoku yeah, tante coming out about that. Yeah. coming out this spring yeah, for real. How do you keep forgetting about that? <laughs> How do we keep forgetting about that? How could you forget? Oh, it's that? almost like we're a silly bunch of fools. <laughs> no, I mm. would have. I think. Why have we not seen a trailer for this or anything? Like no announcements. What the fuck? We did. No, we saw one trailer and it just said 2023. There was True. no announcement, no release date, nothing that I saw of that, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? But uh, yeah, end of the month, we're getting the beginning of season two. So, Mashoku Tensei fans, we eating good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's going to cover the next six volumes. Yes. It'll be great. Yes. Oh, it's going to be amazing. All right. That's it for us, guys. We will see you on yeah. the next stream. Until then, take care and goodbye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs>